Welcome to another action-packed summer evening from Corona, California, live from the Omega Event Center in Corona, California, where it's a nice summer evening. We can guarantee tons of fun, ladies and gentlemen, as we are locked and loaded. Tonight, Ruben B of the Ford from Salinas, California, will attempt to keep his unblemished record intact as he faces tough Mexican Jose Santos Gonzalez. It's Salinas RB4 against Guadalajara's Torito. From Corona, California at the Omega Products, I am Bethel Duran, joined by one of the best boxing scribes out there, one of the best analysts. And in case you didn't know, a man who does not hold back any kind of opinion, mm. and he brings a strong, nice polo, by the way, Steve yeah. Kim. Yeah, uh, we are stepping up. This is the dog days of summer, uh, continuing on a tradition. Every year we end the summer right here at Omega Products International in Corona. And this is the third time this summer, basically, we've gotten to see one Ruben Villa since April 14th. And when Salinas, this is his third eight-round fight as he continues his development. Also on the card, a young man that I call the Teddy Roosevelt of boxing. You know oh. why? Because he speaks softly, but he carries a big stick. Sal <laughs> Sanchez, uh, never at a loss for words except when he talks to us. Yeah. He is also on the card tonight. Now, Sal Sanchez on the card. He's a co-feature. Ruben Villa the fourth, and as always, interact with us. Steve has his phone right now. We will tweet with you. We will interact with you on the Facebook. So if you leave it something clean, we're going to go with you. This is your broadcast. This isn't ours. It's for you, and we will keep it going. So the more interaction you have, questions for Steve, we will answer it all. Share, share, and share. Like, if you have any questions, you can see from Guadalajara and all Mexico. So our fight tonight, we have six different fights on the card. A couple kids making their debut. But, Steve, in that locker room where the fighters quote unquote locker room in that warehouse, I looked up in the ceiling and you see pictures of Timothy Bradley, Mauricio Herrera, Osito Lopez, Tonio Diaz. This can be a springboard for something bigger for these young fighters, Absolutely. especially Rubia. Everybody starts somewhere at certain points and in the audience tonight, hopefully he'll join us tonight, is a young man by the name of Danny Roman, okay. the WBA 122 pound champion, who will be making his debut under the zone October 6th, I believe in Chicago, Illinois. Yep. He fought in venues just like this not too long ago, so uh, you can make it here. You can make it anywhere. Is that New York? I think that was New York. That but we'll, New York, we'll get yeah. there. We'll get there because we have people watching us from New York, <laughs> Philadelphia, of course, all over the place. YouTube tonight, also on Facebook, wherever you might watch this fight. Let us know. Tweet about it. Use the social media. We interact with you guys. Once again, Steve Kim on Bethel Duran. Steve, UCN Live is where you want to send your tweets. Duran Sports. I'll check a couple, but regardless, though, we're gonna have some fun here at Omega Products in Corona, California. Thompson Boxing in another fantastic venue and it is packed they got here early food trucks are going beer lines are going and now it's time for our first fight to make the walk to the ring good evening ladies and gentlemen and a welcome on behalf of thompson boxing promotions we'd like to welcome you to the omega products international outdoor arena ladies and gentlemen we have a fantastic night of boxing action lined up for you the fighters are ready. There's only one question left to ask, and that is, Corona, California, are you ready? Well, let's get the party underway. Please welcome out of the red corner from Riverside, California. Here is Keith Danger Carlson. Choosing a song with the long intro, Keith Carson. Danger, Carson says his hometown, Riverside, California. Loves a lot of his work in San Bernardino. Making his pro debut. He's 26 years old. Nickname of Danger. Combat sports veteran. He's also 6-5 and five in the MMA world. And Beto, we start off with a battle of the unknowns here tonight in Corona. Both Carson and his opponent will be seeing in a few seconds Carlos Velasquez are making their professional debuts tonight. And Velasquez, nicknamed Charlie, he'll be coming up next. 
opponent as he makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner from Phoenix, Arizona. Here is Charlos Charlie Belasque. With his trainer, Joel Diaz, right next to him. I think you love that guy. I love that guy. It is Charlie Velasquez. Carlos Velasquez's official name. Everybody calls him Charlie. Phoenix, Arizona is his hometown. Living and training in Indio, California now to make his pro debut. Pro debut, the tail of the tape for them. We're ready to go. Our ring announcer, Sonny Franco. Once again, good evening, and ladies and gentlemen, and a welcome. We're coming to you from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, where tonight Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present Locked and Loaded, The Path to Glory. We begin tonight's event with the first bout of the evening. Scheduled for four rounds of action in the lightweight division. At ringside, the three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Dr. Lou Moret, Marty Dakin, and Rudy Barragon. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Zach Young. Here we go, fight fans. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He steps in the ring tonight wearing the black trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 135.1 ready pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional debut. Ladies and gentlemen, from Riverside, California, introducing Keith Danger Carlson. And introducing his opponent, Fighting under the blue corner to my right. He stepped the ring tonight wearing the red trunks trimmed with gold. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 133.7 solid pounds. Tonight, he too makes his professional debut. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us tonight from Phoenix, Arizona, introducing Carlos Charlie Velasquez. Once again, you referee in charge, Zach Young, give the final instructions. Okay, Charlie King, you already have the instructions. You don't expect the trunks are good, there's nothing left to say. Zachary Young, the third man in the ring, as we are ready to go. Our opening bout tonight, six of them coming your way. Thompson Boxing, Omega Products International and Corona, right off the 15. Look at the teletape. Yeah, and you saw a big difference in age, 26 to 19, I guess, in favor of Mr. Danger Carson himself, but also really wide gap in terms of amateur experience in favor of Charlie Velasquez. Charlie Velasquez, the 19-year-old in the red. 80 amateur fights. His opponent, Keith Carson, had about 20 of them. Fought of the Desert Showdown, so he's had some experience out there. Carson background is a wrestler. He wrestled in high school. Jiu-Jitsu blue belt. Two stripes. So he just loves combat sports. You have two fighters making their pro debut. Gotta love that. Uppercut landed by Danger Carson. What up, Shelly Woods? I see all the comments coming back. We missed you, too. Good scrap opening up. Now, Beto, even though this is the pro debut of Velasquez, this is also 
basically a audition for Thompson Boxing. According to Alex Campanova, the general manager and matchmaker of this company, they are taking a look at him tonight. So again, it's not if you win sometimes, it's how you win. That, that might be something that Velasquez and Joel Diaz probably have in mind coming into this bout. The training with Joel Diaz, you see the patch on the corner of Charlie's trunks. Lance a left hook, does Charlie Velasquez. Clash of heads. Velasquez, 19 years old. Grew up in Phoenix. His dad was taking him around from gyms, training him. Dad, a construction worker. He's known Antonio Diaz, which is Joel's brother, a fighter who actually fought here at Omega once. Antonio does a lot of the amateur background, taking young amateurs all over the country to the big tournaments, and that's how he met Charlie. Said, hey, when you're ready to turn pro, let's come to Indio. That's what he did. So he's now in Indio, California. He was actually there for four months. Actually, was supposed to fight earlier. That fight fell through. And he's just been at the, the camp house. You know, Beto, he's the taller, rangier fighter, and he certainly has a reach advantage. And although he gets tossed aside right there, I want to just establish that jab, unfurl that left hand from the outside, kind of work his way into the fight, really use that physical advantage from the perimeter. One thing that's clear about Carson, he certainly wants to be physical from in close. He does look like the stronger guy. He's the more mature physical being in there for sure. Yep, 26 years old, Keith Carson. Final seconds of the opening round. Here on Facebook, opening bout from Thompson Boxing Bo Promotions. Good scrap so far. Let's see, what do we got here on the Facebook? We missed you guys. We have definitely missed you. I missed you. I wasn't here for the last one. Now, whoa, whoa. Before we get started, you know who we have to say hello to first. Of course. Uh, our our come security on blanket from Philadelphia, Linus SQ, and of course, King Hipster himself, Ryan Scalia. Ryan Scalia, I need to have you need to give you my email. That way you can just give a scouting report on all <laughs> these guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I've seen we have the Philippines so far. Uh, Mabuhai. There it is. Elvis Garcia fan. Elvis Garcia will be fighting next out of San Diego. Then it'll be Daniel Guzman, Luis Lopez, Sal Sanchez, and Ruben Villa. Uh, Scott King wants to know. Pedraza or Beltran, Steve Kim? Ooh, that, that's an interesting fight. I, I think right now the length the legs and the movement of Pedraza. It's a 50-50 fight, but keep this in mind, the fight's in Arizona, the home turf of Beltron. But I think from a stylistic standpoint, the Puerto Rican, as they say, might be all wrong for the defending WBO 135 pound champion. And, and quick note about that fight. Talk to Bob Aaron. Bob Aaron's made it clear the winner of that fight will fight Lomachenko December Ooh 1st at the Forum. Really? Trini Cervantes, what's happening, Trini? Trini. Appreciate you. Armando Murillo Cuñado, what's up? Mabuhai back, Steve. <laughs> and we got some news on Manny Pacquiao that we'll talk about later. Oh, does it involve taxes? <laughs> that that it's tied in, tweet. actually. I saw your tweet, yeah. so I saw it. why I bring it up. <laughs> Alan Martinez shouting out Charlie, Mar Charlie Velasquez. Gilbert Cerno, what's happening, people? So... Make sure you guys share. This is our opening bout. Good left hook of Charlie Velasquez. He's wearing the red. 19 years old. You can see as the exchange punches, although Carson's technique is not bad, Velasquez's punches have a little bit more snap and torque to them. A little bit tighter technically than Carson's. Yeah, Carson might have that MMA background, but he said for this fight, it was all strictly boxing. He's a combat sports fan. He was, if it's a you know, MMA fight, a boxing fight, it doesn't matter. I am watching everything. I've said in the past that MMA guys who do boxing are very, very good at doing MMA. His technique, Carson's actually not bad. Yep. Did have the amateur background, did Carson. Not that many fights, but he was going to those tournaments. You could see that. And you know what? That's exactly where he wants to be is on the inside. He might be outgunned overall by Velasquez, but Carson from the outside is not going to have any success. Now, if he's inside right there, chest to chest, Probably the only chance he's really going to have to touch Velasquez consistently. Really lean on him and use his overall physical strength. Y saludos a los Mochi Sinaloa. Orale. Hey, 
Uh, Keith Carson's corner was very confident while I was talking to him. He was getting his hands wrapped up. Carson working out of Elite Boxing in San Bernardino. Good job, Keith. Get the job. Oh, and there's a good one, too, there by Velasquez. Charlie, real name Carlos. Like, so what do they call you? He's like, oh, I don't care. Call me Charlie or Carl. I'm like, dude, it's your name. What do you want to be called? He's like, well, everybody call me Charlie. Velasquez is now starting to layer his one-two with that clean-up left hook. Velasquez went to Central High in Phoenix. His dad, Domingo, construction worker. Final seconds of the second. Opening bout. Pro debut for both of these two. It's a good one so far in Corona. Army and Navy showing love for Louis Lopez and Thompson Boxing. Steve Sembrano, how you doing, sir? Louis Lopez will be the fourth fight of the night. Sao Neno Rodriguez, speaking of top rank. Oh, I remember. He used to be a fighter. Now he's won again as we take a look at some of the action from round number two. One, two there from Charlie Velasquez. Velasquez's punches delivered just a little bit more fluidly and perhaps a little tighter coming right down the pipe. But Carson has proven to be very game and durable throughout the first six minutes. In fact, Saul Neno Rodriguez, he is the prodigal son. He's now back under the banner of top rank promotions. Neno, uh, to ask your question, there are six fights tonight. Ruben Bia, the fourth, is the main event. Taking a look at Joel Diaz across the rings. Had a couple of young fighters from Uzbekistan and Russia. Some big victories the last week, including Bachir Akhmedov who's going to be put on the fast track at 140 there, Beto, very soon. Good yeah, young fighter. That's the guy who fought last night? Uh, he fought on Saturday night. Okay. Got knocked down early by Barroso, who's a former belt holder. Then he wore him down with body shots. Joel Diaz is very high on those guys, uh, all managed by Vadim Kornilov, best known for having Ruslan Provodnikov and now Dmitry Bivol. Yeah. So Joel last night had a fighter at, uh, at Orange. Akhmedeliov. Yep. Yeah. He has a fight tonight. And he has another fighter tomorrow at Agua Caliente. Steve Zambrano, appreciate your service in the military. As Charlie Velasquez starting to go to the body. Carson in all black right there with him. Again, Velasquez is the superior technical fighter, but when he lays inside, he does give Carson some opportunities to really have some success. Henry Ramirez watching. Henry in the locker room. His fighter, Louis Lopez, will be the fourth one tonight. And there are a lot of Louis Lopez shirts as Lopez sold over 200 tickets for this one. Keep the job. Keep the job, Harry. Go. Charlie Velasquez at that Joel Diaz training camp. Lives at the training camp house. He said it's boring, nothing to do. Perfect for a fighter. <laughs> as they say, there's no there there. But he said it was perfect for a fighter. <laughs> He said you get used to it because you work and you run as a team. He sparred TJ Dillashaw and Cub Swanson, the MMA fighters. Also got some sparring against Diego De La Hoya. Good overhand right. This is a good pro debut for both these it guys. Is, good it, scrap. It, it's tough for Velasquez. Uh, you get to see a little bit of what he has and what he needs to work on. One thing very evident, he does have some physical tools. Tall, lanky guy. Good size for a lightweight. But I do think mastering that front side with that jab and being able to control distance and spacing a little bit better probably going to be a point of emphasis with Joel Diaz. Shelly Woods, on, Air Force team. veterans at the Armed Forces love boxing. Yeah, they do. It's also different as you're making your pro debut. You, the smaller gloves, the different, no headgear, and also learning your own conditioning. You can spar all you want. Good right hand from Velasquez. Keep the comments coming and share a like on the Facebook. All the tweets sent with Steve Kim. 
We'll get the news and notes going. Three rounds in the books. Okay, we got a tweet here from Box Rec Gray. Gray Johnson, we're the real knowledgeable guys out there uh, on the World Wide Web. He says, two reasons to watch tonight. Ruben Villa has a great chance to get to the world title level and to see if anyone walks out of the ring as soon as the bell starts. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, out there, there's a card on TV on FS1, uh, a PBC card in Minneapolis, where Curtis Harper, who once fought Chris Ariola in a very entertaining battle in Ontario about three years ago, was matched up with F. Ajagbe, good prospect, uh, who was trained by Ronnie Shields, promoted by Ringstar Promotions. Before, as the bell rung for the first round, he just walked out of the ring, which does give new meaning to the term walkout bout. And he explained earlier that he wanted a little bit more respect and he did not like the money. I don't believe that was a tribute to one Aretha Franklin. Rest in peace. Wait, but don't these guys sign <laughs> contracts before? <laughs> Now we have seen it all. Like they tell you what you're getting paid, right? Yeah, and I, I believe Curtis Harper with that, with that antic tonight is going to be in line for a very, very long suspension. And that was the TV bout? Yes, it was actually on TV. Oh, my goodness. What did my boy Ray, Sweet Baby Ray do? <laughs> he had to dig into the pipes for that one. Yeah, I guess you could say a jog base scored a walk-off knockout. Yeah, that's what we're going to say. Oh, good left hook from Velasquez. Another follow left hook. Right hand from Velasquez. Another hook. He's hooking away. It's Charlie Velasquez. But Carson showing a chin. Carson corner yelling at him. Everything, Keith. Come on, Keith. Everything you got. Yeah, we're right next to the corner of Keith Carson. Danger, Carson. Sent by Diego Martinez. Opening bout, pro debut for both Charlie Velasquez, Keith Carson. And Beto, you mentioned this the last round, the unknown territory of fighting without headgear and the smaller glove. You can see noticeably, even though Velasquez is winning this fight pretty handily in terms of rounds, and he's had some real moments in the fourth and final frame here. Mouth is wide open, and you can see as he lays inside, he's not exactly rushing to get his shoulders rotating and his hands moving. Yep. This has certainly been an experience for young Velasquez. He's not going to forget. This is a very, very tough business. Yeah. North, another left hook. Like, we've seen so many young fighters who are matched up against tomato cans where they blow them out the first 10 fights and they don't get any work. This is good yep. quality learning experience for Charlie Velasquez. What else would you expect from the Joe Diaz fighter, though? Coach Jerry Arias watching us. Titan Edge Athletics. Who trains Beto, Michael Dutchover and Rudy Hunter Torres. Yeah, and Beto, I also believe for, from the perspective of Alice Campanova and Thompson Boxing, they want to see what this kid has. Yep. If, he, if he beats up on a mannequin or a sack of potatoes, uh, you're not going to really get a read on what you have there. The two fighters exchange hooks. And Keith Carson is a fighter that you could definitely bring back. Well, I know one thing about Keith. He is durable. Yeah. And these guys are very valuable in terms of raising up your prospects, getting quality rounds, and teaching these guys something about the rough waters they're going to face. Yeah. Good, you, yeah. Good opening bout. Two young fighters making their pro debut, giving their all. Hands off to them. Good job. Charlie Velasquez, Keith Carson. They go the distance. Tap gloves. Both of them. A little gas. Both of them. Trying to get their first fight underneath their belt. Lucia Martinez, saque las botellas. Y aproparse las botanas también. Hello. Rick James for you there, Steve. <laughs> By the way, Francisco Salazar, one of the staples of Press Row here in Southern California, notes. The Ajagba Harper officially went down as a disqualification win for Ajagba at one second of the opening round. Now, that might be a record that could almost never be broken. One second.
Jason Tufexis, I hope I'm saying your name right. Undisputed Design in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. He said, uh, look, when Bethel's suggesting that Ryan Scalia sends scouting notes, he sends the meme of uh, Conor McGregor saying, pay me. <laughs> look, I would definitely pay in poutine and beer, baby. <laughs> I hope I said your name right, Jason. Appreciate you watching in the Great White North. We are the North. The ring, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's leave the party to the professionals. We're all here to have a good time. Let's be professional. Thank you. All right. We're getting all excited. Our next bout is going to be Elvis Garcia, Osvaldo Ortega. The judges are getting their cards and the results ready. So appreciate you guys, as always. Keith Carson making his pro debut. Like him. Brenda Garcia, saludos. And Henry Ramirez, if you're still watching the back, when you walk out, man, bring us a beer with your fighter. Actually, no, your fighter's got two more fights, so why don't you... Uh, I don't know if they have liquor here tonight. I know they have beer at Omega. <laughs> but definitely take the beer. It's, it's going to sell out yeah. quick. Jerry Dutch over watching us. Appreciate you as always. At Midland, Texas. In fact, I believe Michael Dutch over will be fighting on the next Thompson card, I believe, September 21st, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Dutch over. September 21st back in Ontario. And uh, Jason Tufexis, I said it right. Oh, there you go. First try. Carlos Bowie, what's happening, Carlos Bowie? Ruben Villa will be the main event tonight. Leah Castillo, he hit the sixth bout. There's our first one so far. Lucia Martinez, mandando saludos a Elvis Garcia. That's our ring announcer. Sonny, Fra Sonny Franco looking smooth. Woohoo! Ladies and gentlemen, after four exciting rounds of boxing to the judges' scorecards, we go for the official decision. Dr. Lou Moretz, he's at 39 to 37. While Marty Dankin and Rudy Barragon both see the bout 40 to 36. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision. From Phoenix, Arizona, Carlos, Charlie Velasquez. Charlie Velasquez will finally get to home to Phoenix for the first time in four months. And say, hey, I'm a pro and I won my debut. Good, good scrap, though. Good scrap. Quick little shout out, Tito Farfan in Bolivia. Vicente Galindo in Ontario, California. How come you're not here, Vicente? Richard Mercia is jumping in. Our next five be Elvis Garcia and Osvaldo Ortega, the heavyweight, coming at it. And, oh, we're going to be on screen? I mean, you're going to show the top of my head. Good thing I'm not going bald yet. As you can see, look, 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 look. Right here. Fancy polos Look at this. right here. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Fancy polos. It's a beautiful summer evening in Southern California. We're in Corona. Uh, Omega Products International. Bethel Durant, Steve came in. You guys all over the place. And Steve, I was actually looking at your news and notes. Manny Pacquiao update? Yeah, Manny is a free agent. He has made it very clear that while he still has a good personal relationship with Bob Arum, MP Promotions, which is his company, will be handling his fights. Uh, my understanding is today, while Eddie Hearn was in Boston promoting one of his events, I think October 20th, the yep. WBO middleweight title bout, he met with representatives of the Pac-Man, and there is real traction that Manny Pacquiao could be returning in December. Okay, now I also saw a tweet about taxes and Manny, right? <laughs> That's inevitable, right? Yeah, he's got to pay old Erwin R. Scheister, and my source tells me the IRS has given him a price. There's a solution to this. The bottom line is he can't pay it unless he actually fights. Okay. So both sides want to come to an amicable agreement. And one name that I keep hearing over and over again for this December battle for Manny Pacquiao is Amir Khan, who fights September 8th in the UK. Amir Khan actually trained with Joe Goosen. Yeah, I was out there a couple days you, ago. You were there, right? Yeah. W okay, where was Joe Goosen uh, denim jacket, though? Of course. It could be 110 degrees. He will wear the denim jacket. I, I don't know if he got that at Miller's Outpost or <laughs> Three Hermanos back in the day, but I got to tell you, <laughs> he makes it work. 
He, he said Tres Hermanos in Huntington Park for La Pacific. Yeah, huh? I went there a few times. I did. The, the king of Montebello <laughs> right here. But, okay, go, I'm going to stick with Joe Goosey because you also tweeted a picture of Joe wrapping the hands. You said it's like an art form. He really, I mean, I got to tell Why? you, he, the way he does it, the way he wraps the wrist, the way he makes the, the knuckles really in line, and the stuff that he does, he actually uses tissue paper as a absorbent. It's, it's unbelievable to watch it. And absorbing smoothness is Sonny Franco. Here we go, Fight Pass. Let's keep the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from Ciudad Obregón, Sonora, Mexico. Here is Oswaldo Power Ortega. Yeah, I'm going to have to Shazam this one. I don't know what Power Ortega is coming into. Y saludos, Valentino Romero, one of the best boxing photographers out there. You know A shows up. Darly Perez desde Colombia, saludos. Adam Espinosa, what's happening? New Final, what's happening? Oh, by the way, Joel De La Hoya writes in and says, similar incident in, in re reference to Curtis Harper happened with Hassan Rahman Jr. versus... A guy by the name of Coach last year. And the song is Venimos del Desierto Nunca Jamás. Came from the desert. Elvis Garcia. Steve came with the Miller's Outpost reference. Sweet Eric Garcia loved it. I still wear 501 silver tabs, by the way. Uh, you should. Yes. Sal Sanchez is the fifth fight tonight. We're on our second one right now. But I want to make this clear. Not the acid-washed ones, though, people. No, 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 no. Elvis Garcia coming into Gerardo Ortiz. El Troquero Locochon. Yes, I Shazam it. I do not know that song. And Elvis Garcia, Osvaldo Ortega coming up. Juan de Lizos, the heavyweights, making their way into the ring. And by the way, Brett Caradona. Guys, good call with the black polos. Actually, the, they're navy blue. They're navy blue, but thank you anyway. But we wear it well. Eric Garcia, anchor blues. <laughs> Steve, you started something with this Miller Outpost <laughs> reference. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? If you really wanted to get dressed up, it's Chess King you went to. Whoa. <laughs> a little too old for me. I went to Structure. <laughs> Sonny Franco, he goes to Callejones. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, Thompson Boxing Promotions continues on with the next bout of the evening. Scheduled for four rounds of action in the heavyweight division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Dr. Lou Moret, Rudy Marty Dinkin, Anna Rudy Barragon, and the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Wayne Hedgepath. But fans, here we go. Introducing first. Front of the red corner to my left. He steps to the ring tonight, wearing the black trunks, a trim with silver. When he stepped onto the scale, he went in officially at 228 pounds even. As a professional, his record stands. Three victories against eight defeats. One of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, the Ciudad Obregón, Sonora, Mexico. Introducing Oswaldo Power Ortega. <laughs> and introducing his opponent, fun across the ring out of the blue corner. He stepped in the ring tonight wearing the red trunks, a trim with silver. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 245 solid pounds. As a professional, his record stands. Five victories against two defeats. 
All five of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us tonight from San Diego, California, introducing Elvis Garcia. Once again, your referee, Wayne Hedgebeth, give the final instructions. Okay, you gentlemen. Wayne Hedgeman, the third man in the ring, and Steve, Kim, you're ready for some heavyweights who are on the controversy right now. Uh, we told you this isn't your normal broadcast. Okay, you ready to talk about something? What do you got? Well, we take a look at the tail of the tape here, but Ryan Scalia chimes in and says, Elvis Garcia fought for the Mexican national team in the amateurs and in the World Series of Boxing, as well as fighting in all the U.S. national tournaments, and he hashtags, Thank me later and hashtag Hamian beer. Yeah, but then he wear Jinko jeans. That's what Scott <laughs> King wants to say. It, I'm telling you, the Anchor Blues comment, Miller's Alpos, Ernie Green. Structure was good, but you couldn't get the IOU shirts or skids like you could at Chess King. Eric, Eric Garcia, baggy or beyond baggy, Steve? Mm. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm tightening up my look, but I was always more of a Michigan Fab Five baggy level. Scott King, they still make silver tabs? <laughs> Ernie Green, just normal cut actually, but circa 2006, I pretty much own every anchor blue. <laughs> Told you people this is your broadcast. You can't go wrong with this as a heavyweight. Like I said, look. Look at that overhand right. Beto, I love this quote from Ortega in our notes. He said, I started boxing at age nine and they're just going to the gym and messing around. I didn't start to take it ser seriously till I was age 30. Beto, 21 years is a long time to half-ass anything. Jeez. What are you doing, like taking the rope and then maybe <laughs> skipping? Uh, Jerry Arias says that Michael Dutchover is calling us out, but not on the Facebook. Where's he talking all this at? Because Dutchover, I, I already schooled him at the Titan gym. Steve, is there a picture of you in overalls with one strap? <laughs> no, no, I actually never did the old. I was a Cavarici guy, for the record. Cavarici. Yes, yes. The one strap, uh, the guy from uh, and by Living the way, Single had it. Yeah, and, and by the way, when I, when I had the cardigan sweater, it looked good. Smooth. Yeah. The shops of Montebello, they got everything <laughs> you need. Heavyweights going at it. First round, scheduled for Elvis Garcia in the red. He's 5-2. and two. All of his victories have come by KO. And keep this in mind about Ortega, record of 3-8. and eight been stopped four times including his last three contests. Jinko all day long. Uh, Jerry Arias, tomorrow 11 o'clock at Titan Edge Athletics. My 13 year old will be there. Michael Dutchover, you better show up. I'm telling you, th this broadcast may go off the rails, but we make it entertaining. Oh. Looking to load up every time is Garcia. Ortega in his last bout was stopped in three by one Trey Lippe, who, by the way, is the son of the Duke, Tommy Morrison. Really? Yes. Stopped in the first round, huh? Yeah, third round. Very nice young man. My understanding, he might be coming back to the wild card to work once again with Freddie Roach. All overhand right being thrown by Elvis Garcia. That'll do it for the first. Michael Dutchover, I'm not missing your comments on purpose, but look, we're here ringside. We're watching the fight. We're watching the replays, monitoring the Facebook comments, monitoring Twitter. I mean, all you have to do is go in the ring and hit one guy. We got five different <laughs> things to do here, Dutchover. We're under a lot of pressure, my man. And speaking of which, Liza. Thank you for joining us, and also live from Barranquilla, Colombia, Paulo Vega. I love that guy. Viva. Saludos, Paulo Vega.
Second round, there's our second battle of the night. Elvis Garcia with Valdo Ortega. After this, Daniel Guzman and Luis Montellano. And Luis Lopez Tal Sanchez in the main event. Ruben Villa. Perla Garcia saying, I love you, bro. Perla, you related to Elvis? Out in San Diego? Body shot. Garcia trains out of South Bay Boxing in Bonita. Oh, Eric Garcia. Oh, you're from the 30 Minute Podcast. Go and check these guys out. They do a 30 minute podcast. There's two guys that work together, Steve. Mm. And what they do is during their lunch break, they'll go in their car and just record a podcast. <laughs> it's fantastic. But these guys actually know their sports. Eric, Eric Garcia out of the Valley actually did their podcast in the parking lot of the Target. It was fantastic. Nito Escobedo is a Tijuana. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the corner of Ortega. Well, they just said something about eggs. Translated in Spanish, you know what he's saying. Garcia's notes that we get from Pierre Casintas, who does a great job here with Thompson Boxing and PR. Said, I started boxing because I wanted to lose weight and I wanted a girlfriend. It worked because I got a girl and lost weight. I mean, <laughs> Steve, Jerry Arias, Los Fidel, September 21st. Ruben Torres is coming up. You really like that kid. Yeah, I do. I think he's a natural-born puncher. In his last fight, he was extended the distance. I thought that was a great developmental fight for him because you're not going to be able to just go through people the way he had been the last several fights. What are you looking for a kid like that? Well, just technical development. I think the one thing he has is natural power. He has an ability with his long arms to turn over hooks in short spaces and make his punches really compact. Still, again, though, he took some time off from the ring, had a hiatus, went to school, pursued other interests. So there's still a learning curve that, that needs to be respected. But I really like the job that Danny Zamora does in the gym with him, really coaching these young men like Michael Dutch over. It gets a lot of quality sparring and legends in uh, Norwalk. You can find all kinds of sparring. You can find some easy sparring or you can find some real sparring. Dutch over going to get it. Dutch over says we are on fire, the best duo. Dutch over, in and out, still better than Whataburger. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be seeing Michael Dutch over. Bright future for that young man out of Midland, Texas. Second round winding down between Elvis Garcia, Osvaldo Ortega. Carlos Carlson checking us out tonight. Speaking of Dutchover, September 21st, there you see him. Midland, Texas, Michael Dutchover. South Angeles, Ruben Torres. And you will see that tickets available at thompsonboxing.com. Or you can buy them that night at the Double Tree. I wouldn't say you should wait, though, because Torres brings a big crowd. <laughs> Carlos Bowie, appreciate that, man. Yeah, I was actually on the Martin and Hooter podcast, the Yo 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 podcast. Love those guys. Uh, yeah, so when you love what you're doing, it's never worked. Tonight got boxing. Tomorrow I got what do I got? Chargers. Sunday I got Dodgers. Steve Kim's got eight thousand articles to write this weekend. <laughs> Randy Vasquez, what's up in Ogden, Utah, home of the Raptors, rookie league team? Right, you write for UCN Live. You had a preview on this fight. You got a Ray Beltron feature going too, right? Yeah. And I also wrote about the Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder fight with Steven Espinoza. Some interesting developments there. That fight may not be as finalized as was advertised last weekend. We'll talk more about that later. Good left hook from Garcia. Sends back Ortega. This is uncharted territory for Elvis. None of his fights have gone past two rounds. In fact, his last bout, February 9th in Tijuana against Ramon Valdez, only went two. Previous two bouts went one round each. So let's see what the conditioning looks like for Elvis Garcia coming into the second half of this fight. Jared McGlinchey checking in. The one and only Jack Reese watching us. 
you guys go buy a home from Jack? Ventura, right? That's yes. Watching the heavyweight dub is Garcia in red, Osvaldo Ortega, power in black. He's got a 3-8 record. Not much for technique, just brute strength between these two. Right hand from Garcia. Main event tonight, Ruben Villa the fourth, Jose Santos Gonzalez, a good test for the undefeated Villa, who's 12-0 against Gonzalez from Guadalajara. Beth Durant, Steve Kim, and you, uppercut landed by Garcia, overhand right from the fighter from San Diego. Scott King is wondering where Doug Fisher is at. Doug has 8,000 jobs. Uh, I, the dog's at home in Inglewood, taking care of the kids. And reading comic books tonight, as he should, the editor of Ring Magazine. I appreciate you guys can hear the corner of Ortega. Hey, Chelly, you figure out the rest. As Osvaldo in the black, breathing very heavy. Coming in at 228. Elvis Garcia, 245. Ten seconds ago in the third. The big boys. And the summer lights in Corona. Ladies and gentlemen, like to take this opportunity to thank some of our sponsors, like to down, Bellagard, Fortifiber, El Dorado Stone, Everlast, International Ballet, the Alpine, the B-Way Corporation, Blue Ribbon, Monday, Tech Packaging. Coming up next, Daniel Guzman, Luis Montellano, Guzman out of L.A., Montellano, Tijuana. Omega Products International. Western Manufacturing, and the Rush of Truck Centers. Once again, thank you to all of our sponsors for an opportunity tonight's event and every event possible. Eric Garcia, that's exactly what his corner is telling him the entire time. Ed Chelly. Eggs. Do your white pants go forward in California? Put your hands together and cheer the fighters on this haze. The fourth year put around. <laughs> Fourth the final round, Elvis Garcia, Osvaldo Ortega. And you know this, David, every single time there's a big Mexican heavyweight, you're going to have that, either the Chris Ariola yeah. or, or Andy, Andy Ruiz. Ruiz. Yeah. <laughs> Giovanni Arzaga coming in with the Andy Ruiz comparison. Andy Ruiz actually up at Big Bear sparring somebody with Abel Sanchez. Garcia in the red. Actually grew up in Umatilla, Oregon on the Washington border. He wrestled, ran track, played soccer at Umatilla High. And moved to San Diego in 2015. <laughs> Second bout of the night. There's six total scheduled. Body shot, finally. Morita Diana cheering on Elvis Garcia. Overhand right from Garcia. Bouncing around. I think to the handlers of Garcia, this is a little bit of a surprise. Again, we talked about the track record. Ortega coming in had been knocked out four times total. In his last three had not seen the distance. Nano Rodriguez, they're lucky they get to drink soda in the breaks. What does that mean? Uh, soda? Who? Are you talking about the fighters or us? No, I don't think the fighters ever drink soda. By the way, kids, a lot of sugar in those things. Stay away from that stuff. Yeah. 
and also in your mixed drinks. Stay away from the orange juice. <laughs> no, no cranberry juice. Unless it's a Zima, right? Then you're good? Yeah, yeah. Well, then you put in a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> Trying to go for the uppercut with Garcia. Now we got a Q&A for Nano Rodriguez. Feel free, Nano, answer all your questions. <laughs> the instruction in the corner from Ortega is fantastic if you speak Spanish. It's basically like if you're at the bar. <laughs> like, just, like there's no technical, it's just like, dude. <laughs> Fight winding down. The heavyweights look like they're going to go the distance. Elvis Garcia, Osvaldo Ortega. Go the distance. Four rounds. Garcia puts his hand up. Gloria Stefan is jamming. That means you're Miami Sound Machine. That means Steve Kim is ready for college football season the Miami Hurricanes. Next week, a Category 5 is hitting Arlington, Texas. Beto, I will be there. My Hurricanes will be facing LSU next Sunday night, by the way, Labor Day weekend. Oh, really? Steve Kim, what happened to TNR? Uh, TNR will be making an appearance one day, I promise. What is it? Oh, that's the next round? Yes. Oh, okay, all right. Um, Troy Williams, when are you coming back to Sacramento? Not this year, but Thompson Boxing will definitely be there next summer. Hopefully not when it's 115. But they do love the, the Sacramento area, especially with a lot of the fighters like Ruben Villa being from uh, Salinas where you can take them up there. You also have some Sacramento fighters that they signed. And that's on the Facebook. What do you have on the Twitter, Steve? Yeah, Tim Catalfo says, used to get my polos and button-ups at Miller's Outpost. <laughs> Several vivas for that shout-out. <laughs> oh, wait, didn't Miller's Outpost also have the Levi's denim jackets? Oh, they no, did. No, but, but hold on, with that white lining inside? I think they did. Yeah, that was the place to get all Levi's, honestly. It was the spot. It's like, if you want to get Nikes, go to Foot Locker. If you right. want Levi's, go to Miller's Outpost. Did they also have uh, the OP shirts there? Yeah. In fact, you know what? I used to love the denim OP shorts in the mid-'80s. Those were plush. Wait, denim OP shorts? Oh, I know they had yeah. the corduroy. Yeah, corduroy, corduroy. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, not, the, the jorts weren't really in then, <laughs> but I used to I love the beige. The beige colors were good. The beige colors. Nah, I used to wear those in Valencia. God. Great oh. times. Great Alex Odin, it's all about Anchor Blue, Holmes. <laughs> Sonny Franco, he knows all about the Blues. Ladies and gentlemen, after four exciting rounds of action to the judges' scorecards, we go. All three judges, Dr. Lou Moret, Marty Dinkin, and Rudy Barragon, all see about the same. 40 to 36, declaring your winner by unanimous decision from Cien San Diego, California, Elvis Garcia. Well, congratulations to Elvis Garcia. Gets his sixth victory. Has to go the distance, though. First time in his career. He does go the distance. Four good rounds against Osvaldo Ortega. Coming up next, Daniel Guzman, Luis Montellano, our third fight of the night. And right now we have a chance to take advantage of Steve Kim's news and notes. Because Steve, writing for BoxingScene.com, also UCN Live, does a lot of different things. You do a podcast with Mario Lopez. Yeah, you've heard of that guy. Called The Three Knockdown. The three knockdown fact, we had Larry Merchant, the legend on this week, uh, definitely listen to him. He's a sage. Larry, what was his line? Boxing, you can't kill it? Or Can, ain't nothing going to save it, ain't nothing going to kill ain't it. Ain't nothing going to save it. Sorry for butchering that line. That, I love Larry Merchant. Just He's hearing the best. Him. Um, Saturday night, though, Ray Beltran, Sniper Pedraza, get going, top-ranked show in Phoenix. Beltran, look, I like watching him fight, but I'm tired of hearing about the, the getting of citizenship. Wow. Started. 
No, because a great American story that's been written for the last two years. <laughs> As a fighter, though, this this is an excellent fight. I really look forward yeah, to it. Yeah, I think it's 50-50. And I have to tell you, I think the movement of Pedraza and the length and the fact that he also, also switch hits very effectively, that worries me because Beltran is a guy that likes to fight inside the pocket. And if you stand and trade with him, he can carve you up. But if you make him move his feet a little bit and reset, that becomes a bit of an issue. Also on the card, the opening bout, Isaac is my dog bay, yeah. who beat Jesse Magdaleno for one of the 122-pound titles. He fights Hidenori Otake, a uh, typically tough Japanese fighter. And so I, I think dog bay's had a big 2018. Now, I saw the, the weigh-in. Mikey Williams posted a picture, top-ranked photographer. Dog Bay here, the, his opponent up yeah. here, really tall. Yeah, he is, but Dog Bay strong. Oh. He's your classically tough, hard-nosed, physically conditioned Ghanaian fighter in the tradition of guys like Ike Corte and, of course, the great Azuma Nelson. Love Azuma Nelson. We're going to keep going, Paul? This is what you call stretch in the building? Yes. All right, we're going to stretch. September's a busy month. You have Canelo, Triple G, that fight, a lot of people going back and forth about it. But the schedule for September is a good one also. Well, also, September 8th, we have Superfly at the Forum. Yep. Uh, 115 pounders once again being presented by Tom Loeffler. That'll be on HBO. Then you talked about the big pay-per-view fight. Then also, Anthony Joshua has a real fight against Alexander Povetkin on the debut of The Zone in the United States. So a lot of stuff going on in boxing. It's been a little bit of a hiatus, a little bit of a slow summer stretch, but that basically ends in about two weeks. Here's a question by the Facebook from Ocean Rock. Does Thompson Boxing do business with all promoters? Because Golden Boy at top rank fights, they don't fight with each other. right? Because Golden Boy at top rank, not fighting each other is not good. But Golden Boy at top rank, get along, right? Well, listen, they, I'd say that they have a truth. They have done fights, though. That's simply not true. Vasil lomachenko Linares was a co-promotion. And also, speaking of that September schedule, Golden Boy takes up Antonio Orozco to Fresno to fight Jose Ramirez. And I think that's going to be a very entertaining back-and-forth fighter. As for Thompson Boxing, yes, they work with everybody. In fact, Danny Roman, who, who hopefully will join us later, he is also now affiliated with The Zone, and he'll be fighting Gavin McDonald October 6th in Chicago. Bethel Duran, Steve Kim, and I think our next fight coming up is Daniel Guzman, Luis Montellano working our way towards the main event of Ruben Villa and Jose Gonzalez. Before that, Sal Sanchez and Louis Lopez. Sonny Franco, look at that sweet flower he's got in the... Let's get the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from Baja California, Tijuana, Mexico. Here is Luis Cañitas Montellano. This is a kid who loves the fight so much so that he fought last week, Luis Montellano. Don't let the record fool you, 0-3-1, but he comes to bang the, the Tijuana. And Beto, of note, you're right, the record isn't much, but all four fights have gone the distance, so he's durable, if anything. He's coming into Perros, the dogs, from Cartel de Santa. And he's actually singing along with them. Luis Montellano. And now please welcome his opponent out of the blue corner from Los Angeles, California. Here is Daniel Guzman. El Sinaloense, Daniel Guzman making his way to the ring from LA, Lincoln Heights to be exact, but his family roots are in Mazatlan, Sinaloa. 
Cristina Nova, of course. Julio Cesar Chavez territory. Mazaclan. Zurdo Ramirez is where he's from. That's where Daniel Guzman has his roots. It's also the song that Julio Urias uses for the Dodgers when he gets healthy. Mohamed Gámez, saludos, viejo. ¿Cómo estamos? Jay Montellano watching in Tijuana. Super Bantamweight fight. Sonny Franco, smooth as always. Ladies and gentlemen, once again for the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Corona, California. Thompson Boxing Promotions continues on with the action. This next bout scheduled for four rounds of action in the Super Bantamweight Division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Dr. Lou Moret, Marty Dinkin, and Rudy Barragon. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Zach Young. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting under the red corner to my left. He steps to the ring tonight, wearing the black trunks, a trim of blue. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 119.8 already pounds. As a professional, his record stands. Zero wins against three defeats with one about even. Ladies and gentlemen, from Baja California, Tijuana, Mexico, introducing Luis Cañitas Montellano. And introducing his opponent, being led in by the current WBA a Super Bantamweight a champion, Danny the Babyface Assassin Roman. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight enters the ring wearing the black trunks trimmed with blue and gold. With gold and white. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 119.8 already pounds. As a professional, his record stands. Two wins against one defeat. One of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Los Angeles, California, introducing Daniel Guzman. Once again, your referee in charge of Zach Young to give the final instructions. Zach Young, the third man in the ring for the teletape of Guzman and Montellano. Yes, and Guzman, four years younger, and both men weighed in just a little bit above the bantamweight limit. Bethel Durant, Steve Kim, and you. Four rounds scheduled. Daniel Guzman in the black. Montiano mentioned earlier he fought last Friday in Indio, California. Interesting kid. They just love the experience of coming out. Hasn't been stopped. Like, how many amateur fights did you have? He said five. Like, when did you start boxing? He said last year. <laughs> that is Tijuana Deluxe. And Beto, I could see why he's gone the distance, even though he is winless. It's a tall, lanky southpaw. Those aren't generally the guys that you want young fighters to face. And he's been thrown up against guys who have good amateur backgrounds, guys that most opponents won't want to take early on. He said, why not? I think he just doesn't know any better. Good job by Guzman. I want to slow down the movement and some of the quickness of Montiano just bang to the body. Take away those legs early. There's another good left hook there by Guzman. Guzman has the right idea early on. Guzman, born and raised in the Maywood Boxing Stable, according to Charles Huerta. What's up, Charles? Pride of Paramount. He's watching tonight. 
And if you can survive Maywood boxing, you can do anything. That is one of the real blue collar gyms in Southern California. Guzman, though, putting that money in the bank earlier, the left hook downstairs. Guzman, 20 years old from Lincoln Heights, California, went to Sotomayor High School. In his career, the pro debut, he was disqualified. He said it was just, referee should have done it, but he was. That's why the loss, uh, as far as Danny Roman, Isaac Zarate, they push him a lot. What kind of work are you getting when you're going against Danny Roman? It's more of a pro style, it does Guzman, than it, he did in the amateurs. So he likes the pro attitude coming in. Smaller well, yeah. gloves. Well, that's very evident just by the way he sits in that pocket and pound that left hook downstairs. And if you're in Maywood, I mean, there's been some who's who in the days of coming out of there. Oh, Leo Santa Cruz for years worked out there. That's actually Guzman's. So that was the inspiration, yeah. seeing Leo going to work. Because he saw Leo before Leo was a millionaire. Before his dad had the big chains. It was just in the roots. <laughs> Oh, La Chona's going. Oh man, perfect for the Tijuana fighter. Thompsonboxing.com, where you can keep up with the schedule coming up, what we have brewing, what's going on, and the social media. Look, we got it all. Hey, tonight we are on the YouTube. We're going to become influencers, Steve Kim. You know, that YouTube thing, it might stick. I think that that has a chance to really stick around and make an impact, I think. Nah, I don't know. Uh, stick to that MySpace, Steve. <laughs> stick to it. I'm more of a Friendster guy myself. Hey, you, hey the way you have been talking about Anchor Blues <laughs> and Silver Tab, I know you are. <laughs> Where's Razzle at? Antonio Reyes. That's right. Oh, by the way, here's a tweet from our good buddy at KO Tickets, Jim Boone. Good start to the Thompson Boxing Show. And it's worth mentioning the stream, like always, is perfect. Okay. Uh, K9 and Beto, keeping it real. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. A great job by California. Joe Pahad and the kids working. Three? Wait, hold on. One, two, three. Four camera kids. I mean, literally, they're like 19 years old. Working it. Joe does three jobs at once. Paul does three jobs at once. It's a small crack staff, and they do a great job getting us on. Steve and I, we just talk about Anchor Blues. <laughs> Miller's Apples, Tres Hermanos. And just said dumb shout-outs to people in Tijuana. <laughs> what up, Antonio Reyes? Yeah, and for any of the ladies out there from our era, you guys remember Koala Blue? Remember that? No, what is that? Co I think that was a line that was created by Olivia Newton-John, if oh I'm not. A lot of the Asian girls in Montebello High School, <laughs> they used to wear that a lot. Seriously, alongside guests, of course, yeah. Okay, I can see the guests with Asian girls. <laughs> Luis Montellano, he has a lot of heart, will come at you with the southpaw. You can only imagine if this kid actually had any kind of training. Well, look, he's having a pretty good second round. Yeah. He stepped on the front foot and taken some of the play away from Guzman. Now, Guzman has to reestablish control and do that again. Step on that front foot, make himself the aggressor here in round number two. Charles Huerta, who fights for Golden Boy Promotions. When's your next fight? I know you injured uh, your Achilles. What's in the future for you? Watching, let the people know. Gets a smooth haircut at RC's Barbershop in Paramount. Mark at Abrams, appreciate your comment. Right? Monchu the second. Who the heck is a living new John? Google doesn't go Whoa. back that far. Whoa. I'm with you, Monchu. I know the name, but Whoa. Hey, hey, there's some times where Steve drops some lines and you're like, what? Like, you, I don't know how old Steve Kim is because he won't reveal that. He's like a Dominican baseball player at the Little League World Series. But you got to understand, there's some lines. You people have never seen Greece. Okay, they might have seen it. This is shameful. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This think is about, shameful. Think about our audience. They're probably in their 20s, maybe early 30s. 
they probably seen Grease, but they don't know who the lady. Is. They don't know who the lady is. And by the way, she had one of the great all-time most salacious music videos of the '80s. Let's get physical. Great song, better video. Google it, folks, or YouTube it. There's no way that's on YouTube. <laughs> And like John Travolta, that's not the guy, that's the Scientologist guy. <laughs> that's also the dude from Greece. Antonio Reyes, saludos a parte de Dio Login. El Elegante, El Dio Login will be fighting tomorrow in Phoenix, Arizona. As he's on that card presented by Top, not, top Rank. Alexia Negrete, aren't you guys supposed to be talking boxing? Are we? What? Nah. Really? Let me, let me give you an answer. Nah. <laughs> like, you're watching it. There you go. You can see it. The Thompson Boxing Facebook stream, we've really been told, do whatever you guys want. Interact with the fans. Look, if you're watching it, you can see the stream. This is your non-traditional broadcast. We have a lot of fun with it. We do respect the fighters and all of them that get in the ring, and we have utmost respect for them and everybody else there. But with this broadcast, it really, look, you're watching an online stream from Corona, California on a Friday night with guys you have no idea who they are. So <laughs> you, you're in here for, to have fun. We're in here to have fun. We're in here to enjoy and entertain you guys. So any way that we can do it, we do it. And the more interaction we have with you guys, the more you're gonna stick around. So let's do it. So back to Olivia Newton John. Yeah. <laughs> so she's got a bright future? Uh, it, it's more the rear view mirror for her at this point, but she had an illustrious career. And Alexa Negrete, just to let you know, we don't score these early preliminary bouts. Once we get to the top, you'll hear more of a professional broadcast. So by professional means, maybe. In the main event tonight, Ruben Villa, Jose Santos Gonzalez. Let's see if Gonzalez or excuse me, Guzman gets back to being more of the aggressor. I think round two may have been won by Montalano on my book. My scorecard, I have it 1-1, one, one. and keep this in mind, it's only a four-round bout. There has to be a sense of urgency if you're Guzman here. Don't have a lot of time to play. And, and Alexander Negrete, do me a favor, though. Please share uh, the Facebook stream. We let everybody know this. Uh, Jay Monteano, shout out to the Familia Monteano watching in Tijuana. Esteban Lopez. This guy's older than me and doesn't know Lydia Newton John. <laughs> the only event we endorse is the Chancla team. No, we oh, don't. Oh, the Chancla team. Steve Kim's actually wearing shoes. <laughs> and they're actually real nice ones. They are. Calvin Klein, by the way. Very nice shoes. I was impressed. Montebello Outlet? Uh, no, no, no. I went to the shops with Montebello, the Macy's. Woo. Steve Kim using that money that he got for being on the boxing rundown. <laughs> boxing rundown with Steve Kim and South well, Korea, they pay you to go well, up there. Hold on, residuals come in monthly. Yeah, in Casa Mexico Tequila. Joshua Castro watching in Japan. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, yeah. Third round of action. Daniel Guzman in the black. Luis Montellano in the blue. You know, Beto, this is about the most skilled 0-3-1 fighter I think I've seen in he a really very is. long time. You look, at it, you look at his form and his technique and the way he's able to box a little bit, his head movement, he faints a lot, and he's southpaw. With kinder matchmaking, he could probably be at least 2-1-1. One, one. He's had nine fights in his life. Five amateur last year. Three, oh, zero, three, and one as a pro. Monteano, when did you find out? For, I saw him Friday at Fantasy Springs. <laughs> and he went the distance. Good scrap. He won a couple rounds. He won eight rounds on a couple judges. Like, when did you find out? He's like, Monday. I'm like, you didn't want to rest? He's like, for what? <laughs> like, <laughs> love the attitude, but you're also, this is the kid who's building up the L's. You gotta be really careful with them, too. You know, and the issue with that is, when you have a record that is upside down so early, you, you begin to become typecast as the opponent, and then time after time, you will be put in unfavorable situations. Yep. But he's given everybody quality work. And I have to be honest, I think this is another very close yeah. round between him and Guzman. But don't score it, though. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the analytics are 
opportunity to thank our sponsors. I'd like to thank Mendel Scaffold. <laughs> there are fancy <laughs> shops at Montebello. Steve, you lie. Oh, come on. Coming up next, Louis Lopez, Edgar Garcia. Lopez from Corona. Garcia from San Luis Rio, Colorado, Mexico. I think Bethel and Steve should sing Let's Get Physical for the Benefit. <laughs> Guru, Mr. Boxing Guru, Salvador Carrillo. Glad your wife let you watch the show tonight. You can find uh, Sal Carrillo at a Latinx performance tomorrow. Christian Castro watching in San Diego. Arriba Las Chivas. Our, Antonio Reyes, the main event tonight, will be the sixth bout. We're on our third one right now. Charles Huerta, my daughter grabbed my phone and turned it off. Charles, your daughter also canceled your appointment at RC's Barbershop, bro. You better call back. Henry Ramirez, who's watching in the in the back. We up next. Henry, after your fight. Monica Soda, please. Beto, I think Guzman, who is the favorite in this bout, needs to have a sense of urgency here. I don't think it's necessarily guaranteed he's up on the scorecards. Yeah. You can see Montellano possibly winning a round or two, especially when it's only four rounds. You gotta get going. Guzman's gotta get that experience that he has that made with boxing to dig down deep. But Montellano keeps coming at you. Not power behind Montellano, but. It's not power, but he's pesky. Throws just enough, and with the just enough accuracy that he is going to make you think just about coming through the front door time and time again. That's where Guzman needs to be. And again, he's been very effective digging downstairs with the left hook. Scott King, you're saying there's trouble with the Facebook stream? Let me know the details. We'll check that out. But he also says you can watch it on YouTube or ThompsonBoxing.com. Right. Appreciate the commentary back. We'll check into that. Because I'm watching on my phone. That's why I'm reading your comments, so let me know. Monchu, pesky, just what you want to hear about your boxing <laughs> career. Well, I said style and punching. But, but again, I'll, I'll say one thing about Montiano. Any young fighter, they're going to get quality rounds where they're going to be made to work and think from this lanky southpaw. Diolo Guin, Jose Gonzalez have the same team. Uh, Jose Gonzalez, the main event tonight. Same style will be a great main event. That's coming up later tonight. Ruben Villa, Jose Gonzalez. I got you, Scott King. Some people are saying they're having trouble. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and those people are on, on, on American Online, obviously. Yeah, get rid of the cricket, man. <laughs> Upgrade plan. Less than a minute to go in our third fight. Good exchange here. Guzman needs to just keep going. Good right hook to the body by Guzman. Yeah. You can see the tools that Daniel Guzman has. Right, and... and Beto, I've always said if you're chest to chest with the southpaw, you take away his left-handedness by being in close. At that point, it really doesn't matter from what side you're hitting. Good one, two there by Guzman again. That's a good one right there. A little bit of blood from the mouth of Guzman. Good fight. Good matchmaking. As Monchu says, he went to ask G to find out about Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> Sonny Franco, the ring announcer, is on the Facebook. That'll do it. Good four rounds. Youngsters going back and forth. They hug in the middle. Luis Montellano, respect to you, young man, taking the fight this week and coming out and putting on a good show. Daniel Guzman, good scrap. El Canitas Montellano, que le va los toros y los cholos. That's our third fight in the book. Beth Durant, Steve Kim, and Alex Godinez, you're right. A fight better than the records indicate. Yeah, that was a good little scrap. Yeah. Two young kids going at it. Why not? Be interesting to see 
what the judges have it. A couple people on the face saying a draw. Rounds two and three, in my view, were very, very close and difficult to score. I get the sense the first and the last one certainly went yeah. to Daniel Guzman. Louis Lopez will be coming up next. Steven Sombrano and Steven Sombrano, do me a favor. Why don't you share the link right now? Let all your people in Corona know that your boy Louis is coming up next. Then after that, Sal Sanchez and then Ruben Villa. Our Facebook fans, unofficial scorecards are saying a draw. It was definitely a close fight. Miguel Cubos. Saludos desde San Luis Potosí. Wait, ¿es el mismo que pelea el Cubos? Hey, I don't know who Monchu the second is, but you have some good comments, man. Appreciate the, the good commentary from boxing fans. All, look, I give a lot of boxing fans a lot of grief because, Steve, you deal with the dummy get demographic. Uh, Mr. Guru deals with a lot of the, the fake bad trolling. But Monchu the second, good observation. Yeah. Miguel Cubos, hey, our heavyweight from Sacramento. Oh, yeah. Saludos. He's watching us right now in San Luis Potosí. That's the Te mirar otra vez, Cubos. The big heavyweight from Sacramento is watching us right now. Sonny Franco, ring announcer, has the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, after four exciting rounds to the judges' scorecards, we go for the official decision. Dr. Lou Moret sees it 39 to 37 for Montellano. Rudy Barragan sees it 39 to 37 for Guzman. And Marty Dakin sees it 38 to 38, declaring this bout a split draw. A lot of credit to our Facebook fans. A lot of people had it as a draw. Kudos to you guys watching. With Inside the ring at this time, to present the winner with their awards. From I mean, we didn't score it officially, but I, can't I can say, see it. I can't say that I have a severe disagreement. I thought the first round, I thought Guzman got off to a very, very fast start. Round four, I thought Guzman outworked him, but two and three, I certainly believe that Montellano had an argument to win it, and the judges, I believe, did their jobs. Luis Montellano still doesn't get his first victory, but he's now 0-3 and 2. Daniel Guzman, 2-1 and 1. Interesting. see, I think they'll run it back maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe when it's six rounds for these two guys, and we'll see what their, what their careers lead. Coming up next, Luis Lopez, Edgar Garcia, then Sal Sanchez against Ernesto Guerrero, then the main event, Ruben Villa, Jose to Gonzalez. Three more fights coming your way from Corona, I'm so used to say in Ontario, uh, here at the Omega Products International. Keep the Facebook comments coming. You're watching Thompson Boxing.
Asher going oh, once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from San Luis, Rio, Colorado, Mexico. Here is Edgar Profe Ivan Garcia. Grupo H100, Tranquis Mortis, that's what Edgar Ivan Garcia is coming into. Veteran fighter, making his way. Profe is his nickname, he's actually a school teacher in San Luis Rio, Colorado, Mexico. Beto Duran, Steve Kim, and you. Appreciate you guys watching us all over the world. And uh, Alex Godinez, yeah, the polos are smooth. Satu Nori, appreciate you checking in tonight. Ramiro Hernandez, Alan Sandoval watching. Eric Ituarte watching us tonight. All right, what's up, Eric? Ovi Sandoval in San Antonio, Texas. And now please welcome in the opponent of the blue corner from Corona, California. Here is Luis Lupe. Coming into the love songs is Louis Lopez, Vicente Fernandez, De Que Manera Te Olvido. How do I forget about you, Steve? <laughs> El Romantico, I guess, is the nickname. Kevin Duncan checking in in Richmond, Virginia. Go Spiders. Always enjoying the Thompson cards. Great job, as always. That's Louis Lopez, a big crowd here for him. Sold over 200 tickets tonight. Ricardo Espinosa, Julio Garnica, what's happening? And I'm with you, Valentina. That's not no, mijo. It's too early. You don't play this one. This one makes you cry right here, Steve. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Corona, California. Thompson Boxing Promotions continues on with the next bout of the evening. Scheduled for four rounds of action in the welterweight division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Dr. Lou Moret, Marty Dinkin, and Rudy Berrigan. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, uh, Wayne uh, Hedgepad. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting under the red corner to my left. He stepped in the ring tonight, wearing the white trunks uh, trimmed with red. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 147.7 pounds. As a professional, his record stands seven victories against 17 defeats with one about even. Two of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from San Luis, Rio, Colorado, Mexico, introducing Edgar Profe Garcia. <laughs> And introducing his opponent, running across the ring out of the blue corner to my right. Ladies and gentlemen, he steps in the ring tonight, wearing the blue trunks a trim with white. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 147.4 already pounds. As a professional, he enters the ring tonight undefeated. Three wins with zero losses. Two of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the body and pride of Corona, California, here is Luis Lupe. Once 
and your referee in charge, Wayne Chadbeck, to give the final instructions. Wayne Hedgeman, the third man in the ring. Our fourth fight of the night between Lopez and Garcia. Look at the teletape, Steve Kidd. Right, and the one thing that stands out, Lopez just 21, Garcia at age 30, who in his last fight was knocked out by Ferdinand Caraboyan at the Velasco Theater on June 23rd. So keep that in mind here. We may not be here long. Lopez trained by Henry Ramirez. Lopez said he's familiar with this facility because he used to come here as a kid. He said, one day I'm going to fight here, and that's what he's doing as a pro. And he's coming out with one intention and one intention only, and this early. Well, Beto, he's also six inches taller by the tail of the tape listening. He just looks physically bigger than Garcia. He went to high school literally down the street, overhand right to Corona Centennial. Go Huskies. Was a freshman football player. They chose boxing. Because in boxing, they want you to maintain your weight, not gain weight. You hear a lot of commotion for him, a lot of people here for him. 3-0, two KOs, Luis Lopez, no nickname. Body work immediately going to it. His opponent, Edgar Garcia. Look, you can make all the jokes you want. This guy usually will give you quality round professional resistance, Steve Kent calls it, but he's Gonna be overmatched tonight. Put off his nickname because he's an elementary teacher, Edgar Garcia. Louis Lopez. In the blue. You just got to get patient. With him. <laughs> Thompson Boxing working with him. Trying to see what kind of fighter they have there. Yeah, in fact, he turned pro in February, and they, they kept him fairly active. The consistency of when he's fought. Fought in February, April, June, and now at the end of August. Probably fit in another fight or two. Uh, before the end of 2018. You can see there, there's some physical tools to work with. Certainly looks the part. Strong guy. And no need to go and take your shots. Look, 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 we, look low hanging fruit, Daniel Guzman. Let's watch Guzman, Luis Lopez, go to work right now. And it is a tough Mexican in Edgar Garcia. You're going to have to go through some of these guys in your career. But how about respect to the man that, any man that steps into the ring? And Guru, if you're going to come with your shade, at least have some good stuff today. <laughs> <laughs> like, ever since you went mainstream media and sold out to Tom Lawford, South Korea, Whoa. You, you have gone very Whoa. soft with your trolling. Wow. September 21st, Ontario, California, where Sal Guru is not invited to. Michael Dutchover, Ruben Torres, Mario Hernandez. We would love to see you there. If not, you can go and check out the Thompson Boxing Facebook stream. There you see Henry Ramirez, rain cross boxing, Louis Lopez in his corner. Main event, Ruben Villa, we up in two fights for the fourth one right now, there's six total. Sal Sanchez is next. Edgar Garcia in white. And Louis Lopez. He needs to get some sparry done with Josecito Lopez. No, who was your partner last time, right? Yeah, did a very good job. 
Hogan's actually in attendance here tonight. Jose Cito said that sometime during the fall, he will be entering the ring once again. Lopez trying to go to the body. Garcia is just going to be that awkward opponent who uh, just is not going to let you. you you're you're going to beat him, but you're going to have to earn everything. Well, in this particular fight right here, Lopez is trying to break through that armor of Garcia. He's actually doing a pretty good job on the inside and in close, just covering up and, and really creating a nice protective shell for himself. And you got to figure things out and. That's part of the growing process for Louis Lopez, who's 3-0. Trying to go to the body of Lopez, that one's stung. Keeping that tight guard, Edgar Garcia. And he keeps coming at you. Look, we saw a fight tonight in Minnesota, the guy didn't even throw a punch. <laughs> No, he literally didn't take a step forward. Oh, we got comments on YouTube too, huh? Oh. Wow, what's up to everybody watching us on the YouTube? Chris Bizad watching over, Chris Munoz. Tim Brunel, Andrew Castillo. What's up to everybody watching on the YouTube stream? Respect to that. Paula Lopez, and come on, Louis. David Guzman, fights like this should be sh sanctioned. Don't you think there's a commission that approves everything? <laughs> like, you think they just found this dude in the back driving the forklift? I mean, I know you can make that joke. <laughs> but, like, think about it. Now, if you're the Tijuana Rancho Grande bar, maybe. And if you want to show up with the John Stockton shorts, respect to you. Sal Carrillo, I miss Rookus. Second round, winding down. Yes. There we go, Steve. Beer just showed up. <laughs> Ace! Tony! <laughs> All right. Fourth fight. I'm not lying. There's a beer that just showed up on a nice, beautiful <laughs> summer evening. I'm going to enjoy this one. Cafe Tacuba, is that what's we're jamming right now? It is a cool venue, standing room only. Jim Boone should be here. This is uh, real cool. I'm looking around right now. People sitting down, food trucks all over the place. We're in the yard, Corona right off the 15. People having a good time. The line for the beer is long. <laughs> Respect to the Ace of SoCal for showing up and bringing one. Have a drink, Paul. I mean, it's, it's, it's light. It's not a fancy craft beer. Oh, David Gumon said it shouldn't be sanctioned. Hey, Edgar Garcia is tough, man. 7 well, 17 well, 1. Say what you want about him. The record is upside down. He's not going to be on the cover of Muscle and Fitness anytime soon. But you know what? Lopez has not blown him out of there. This is the type of experience a guy that's a little bit rough around the edges, the way Lopez is, is going to need. And Lopez is loading up on his shots and isn't able to really get to Garcia. I mean, this guy is tough. This is why you will sanction a 3-0 fighter against a 7 and 17 fighter. Are we saying Garcia has a shot at this? No. But we're saying this is the kind of experience a young fighter like Louis Lopez needs? Way well, better. Beto, as you watch this fight go on, you start to see the technique of Lopez. I don't want to say unraveling, but you, you begin to really discover his flaws. He's very wide in his punching frame. He's got good physical strength, but he needs to be a little bit 
more precise in where he punches and how he punches. Look, how many of you guys have played Sunday League Baseball and you're in your 20s and you think you're a badass and you played in junior college and then there's like a 48-year-old dude who's thumbing everything at you and you go over three and you strike out? How many of you guys have gone to the gym thinking you're going to ball up a dude and old man basketball just gets to you? Trying to unload is Louis Lopez. You know, and the Art one from Garcia. And Beto, the one thing I noticed about Lopez, when he unloads on his shots, now again, on this night, he's probably not going to pay for it. His punches are so wide and his hands come apart from his, from his defensive frame, he's going to be very, very susceptible to sharp counter punches right down the middle. But again, and it is a learning process for young men like Louis Lopez. Wouldn't you rather get rounds like this and video that you can break oh. down instead of a one hit or quitter the well look most matchmakers the highlight reel knockouts are great for the fans the tough rounds are really good for the management and the matchmakers Body work from Lopez. I'd like the body work from Lo Louis Lopez tonight. Goes upstairs. Aguanta el profe Edgar Garcia. Guru, your comments are very weak tonight. We take a look at some of the action from round number three. It has been Lopez's fight from the beginning. Garcia, for the most part, has been in a defensive posture, but he has showed some stick to itiveness just by hanging around here as we go to the fourth and final round. And that's what I talk about, it. it's all right there in that sequence. Lopez throws a lot of hard, heavy shots, but he's got to do a better job of keeping them a little bit more compact and straight and also bringing his hands back to proper defensive position. Miguel Kubo is our favorite heavyweight from Mexico. This guy is as tough as Kubo's. Kubo's going third person. <laughs> Guru, when are you getting Kubo's on your show? You know, there's tough, there's very tough, then there's Kubo's tough. Dario Alvarez, saludos de Argentina. Un Malbec, por favor. Vamos, River. Fourth and final round. The professor, Edward Garcia, asked him, why do you keep fighting if you're a teacher? He said, it's a great way to see the world. <laughs> well, now we can cross Corona off his and list and over. stop it. Wow. Wayne Hickman, stop huh. it. Well, didn't like that. I, 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 I don't understand that one from Hedgepath. I, I don't think he was any worse for wear than he was <laughs> in the first three rounds. In fact, Garcia, who you see right there, very disappointed, actually began the round as the aggressor. Yeah, and Garcia's looking at the referee, looking at the commission like, don't you know who I am? But you always protect the fighter. Wayne Hedgeman steps in and stops it. And the crowd doesn't agree with this, but it's a victory for Louis Lopez in his backyard. And this is right before the stoppage, and I have to be honest with you, I like Wayne Hedgepath. That's a respected referee. It looked to me... Like he himself had seen enough, but honestly, Garcia didn't really seem in that much distress at that particular moment. Luis Lopez improves the 4-0, gets his third stoppage. Edgar Garcia lose for the 18th time, and a lot of respect to that man right there, Edgar Garcia. Mentioned he's a school elementary school teacher, coming in and giving work to Luis Lopez. Was Lopez ever in danger? No, but quality rounds, professional yeah. resistance from Edgar Garcia. They kind of the final fighters that are the backbone of boxing coming up next. Sal the Beast Sanchez, Ernesto Guerrero, our co-feature. Then Ruben Villa and Jose Gonzalez. And our Facebook fans, not exactly happy about that stoppage. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Garcia won a little bit of the crowd tonight.
a lot of respect to these fighters that get in the ring, but when you know you're coming to his opponent and you got a, an animal like Luis Lopez, young and hungry, just unloading with body shots. Henry, what are you doing? Are you checking the Facebook right now, Henry? Are you reading the comments? <laughs> he is, all right, he's reading the comments. And Sonny Franco's in the ring. I've lost it all tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes 39 seconds of round number four. Referee Wayne Hedgepeth puts a stop to this contest, declaring your winner by way of a knockout and still undefeated from Corona, California, Louis Lopez. Oh, Khaled, I said he was coming out like an animal, and that's exactly what a youngster does. They come out all aggressive, and that's what Louis Lopez did tonight. I guess Edgar Garcia, the two warriors, hug. A lot of respect between the two. Lopez gets the stoppage. Now four and oh. Yes, George Gonzalez, it is late. If you know anything about Thompson Boxing, we don't start until like midnight. Yeah. That's what we do. We'll give you about eight different fights. We have two more coming your way. Beth the Durant, Steve Kim, and you guys all over the Facebook world. Trini Cervantes checking out. Everybody appreciate the comments. We have two more coming up. Sal Sanchez, Ernesto Guerrero, and then the main event from the Salad Bowl, Salinas, Ruben Villa, and Jose Torito Gonzalez. That'll be coming up as Vicente Fernandez is jamming right now. Now, if you guys want, you can go and follow Steve Kim, Steve UCN Live. He writes for UCN and Boxing Scene. And also, one of the things that I like, Steve, is that your Twitter. Yes. You've been going back and forth I with some of the de demographic. A lot, yes, a lot. But you also break down something. You have the pulse of the boxing I world do. right now. What is the vibe in the boxing world right now? Well, people are waiting for September. This is a little bit of a slow stretch as it usually is. You know, one thing to look for, Beto, in the upcoming fall months, as you're being bold, okay? Be bold. Yes. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of dates, a lot of weekends, specifically Saturday nights. There's gonna be multiple shows on various networks and platforms, and there is gonna be an overabundance of boxing. So, for those who have been waiting for the boxing, you're gonna get your boxing if you pay for a couple of services. Very, very busy stretch coming up in the sport of prize fighting. Now, this past Monday on the three knockdown rule with Mario Lopez that you guys have on uh, Revolver Network, right? It's Revolver, yes. And you go and check that out. You can follow anywhere. You got Larry Merchant on. The great, the great Larry Merchant, formerly of HBO, but many people don't know that he was one of the best columnists yes, when he was he working was. Uh, when he was a newspaper writer for the Philadelphia Inquirer, right? And then the New York Daily News. Yeah. Now, Larry had some interesting tidbits about the state of boxing right now. Well, like you said, uh, you referenced the line earlier. You said, ain't nothing going to kill it, ain't nothing going to save it. He still believes that the game of boxing, while it may never be mainstream as it was, let's say, 50, 60, 70 years ago, it's still very significant. I've said this for a long time. If you actually look at the global, worldwide appeal of boxing, and you look at some of our comments exactly where these people are watching this show, Boxing, in many respects, outside of soccer, I can make an argument, internationally, is probably the second or third most popular sport on the planet Earth. This fight, uh, question from Kevin Bean. Will Wilder Joshua ever happen? Uh, I would say not right now. I would say there's a lot of pressure by next year to make that fight happen. I'm still waiting to see if they are actually going to pull the trigger, Beto, on the Tyson Fury Anthony Joshua fight. I and mean, if you watched that broadcast last week, didn't it look for the world? That fight was signed, sealed, and delivered. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, hearing different things, let's just put it that way. Now, you had a column with Steven Espinoza, the head of uh, Showtime yeah. Sports, where he was saying that he wished he had gone yeah. overseas. I mean, look, it's very simple from Showtime's perspective. They're only going to do one pay-per-view at the end of the year. Okay. If it's not Fury Wilder, it will be Mikey Garcia against Errol Spence. And my understanding is Mikey Garcia is still dead set on jumping up two weight classes to challenge the IBF 147-pound champion. Sonny Franco is our champion in the ring. He has our next fight ready to make their way. Let's get the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner, 
from our Prieta Sonora, Mexico, here is Ernesto Monito Guerrero. And now, please welcome his opponent out of the blue corner from Pacoima, California. Here is Saul the Beast Sanchez. Untouchable young boy never broke again. Definitely had a Shazam that one. Uh, Sal Sanchez making his way into the ring. Our co feature tonight, the 21 year old undefeated fighter from Pacoima, California, trained by Joel Diaz. Anthony Chavez, too pretty. Oh, trained by Henry Ramirez, check it in. gentlemen once again from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the co-main event of the evening scheduled for eight rounds of action in the Super Bantamweight Division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Dr. Lou Moret, Marty Dakin, and Rudy Barragon. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Zach Young. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner to my left. He steps in the ring tonight wearing the black trunks trimmed with white. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed officially at 121 pounds even. As a professional, his record stands 28 of victories against 22 defeats. 18 of his wins coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Agua Prieta, Sonora, Mexico, here is Ernesto Monito Guerrero. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner to my right. He steps in the ring tonight wearing the white trunks with gold and black. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed officially at 120 pounds even. As a professional, he steps in the ring tonight undefeated. Nine wins with zero losses. Five of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the body pride of Pacoima, California, here is Saul the Beast Sanchez. What's going on here, Charlie? Does that go to the final instructions? Let's 
Look at the tail of the tape for our co-feature tonight. Sal Sanchez, still a kid at age 21 years old. All their dimensions are about the same. Keep this in mind about Guerrero, a veteran of 50 fights. Bethel Duran, Steve Kim, and you all over the world, wherever you may be, check in right now. Leave a comment as to where you're watching this fight from. And Sal Sanchez represents the 818 Pacquema, California. But now training in Indio. In the Coachella Valley, the Indio Boys and Girls Club with Joel Diaz. Sal undefeated in the white. The beast, he does not talk. Literally, he <laughs> really doesn't talk. But he will come in there and swing with you. This one at 120. A late replacement, Ernesto Guerrero. Sal was preparing for somebody else as of last week. Guerrero, last minute replacement. We mentioned those 50 fights and real noticeable names. Guys like Jonathan Guzman, Raul Hilares, Ryan Kilcheski, Luis Rosa, and TJ Doheny, who just recently won a title in yeah. Japan at 122, dot the resume of Mr. Guerrero. Gilbert Tafoya watching us in Grand Junction, Colorado. What's happening? I got turned down for a job in Grand Junction. Lucky you. NBC affiliate there. <laughs> we will see you in Las Vegas. Andres Vivas in Delhi, California. The co-feature, Sal Sanchez. A year ago, he didn't even have a manager. Barely had a trainer. Now here is the co-feature of Thompson Boxing. Younger brother of Golden Boys, Emilio Sanchez, is here in attendance. Also with Chimpa Gonzalez are here. Yeah, both of them now under the direction of Joel Diaz. In fact, Emilio, a couple weeks ago, got back on the winning track, pounding out a stoppage over the veteran Christopher Martin at the Velasco Theater. Good mind-clearing performance for him coming off a devastating early stoppage. Oh, against a Filipino unknown then. Yeah. Had the heavy hands. So Emilio gets back in victory. And Emilio decided, I'm going to move my brother who was out there at the DS training camp. They have a camp house where just a bunch of young, hungry fighters are living together. Like their own dorm. They run together in the morning. They train in the afternoon. Sal, his ideal weight would be 118. If he really wanted to, he could make 115. He said, but it's hard enough to get fights at 118. Why even try 15? The main event tonight, Ruben Villa is next. Strong right from Sal. Body shot from Sal. He's in white. Another good body shot. That's a weapon he's been picking up the last couple fights. Under Joel is attacking the body. One two from Sanchez. ThompsonBoxing.com, if you want to go and check everything out. The third man in the ring, there you see is Zach Young. Recently came back from a trip to China with the WBC. Dr. Andre Guerrero checking in, letting us know that they were there together. You see Joel Diaz Sr. with the red. Joel Diaz Jr. working the corner also in the green. And big Serge Estrada, the cut man tonight. Second round of action scheduled for eight. Keep your comments coming. Sal Sanchez. You will see him. He loads up on his shots. The record of 9 0, 5 KOs. Sal started boxing. He's the youngest in the family. Big family. His sister Val ran collegiate cross country and track at Cal State LA. He was always the smallest one. Falling around. Good left Back. hook. Oh. There it is. Oh, oh, it's a slip. Wow. I don't. 
<laughs> I think he missed that call. The left hook set up a right hand over the top, which caused him to touch that glove on the canvas. I think Zach Young missed one there. Slip, knocked down whatever it was. It really got the eyes open of Ernesto Guerrero and Sal Sanchez locking in. And you can see Guerrero slipping that right hand over the top. Sanchez may just want to concentrate on just digging that left hook to the body. Body will not move if he, as he doubles up on it right there, right to the ribs of Guerrero. And the quality of work that you get as Sal, believe me or not, he talks every now and then, just saying my training with him. Sal is one of the kids who always wants to be first in running or whatever competition they have. He goes back and forth with his brother on social media about how his brother's so slow. His brother's usually second in the entire camp. Staying patient as Sanchez. You can hear him run, trying to unload. Lands that left hook himself, covers up, lands another quick check hook. Another left hook from Sanchez. Body shot from Sal Sanchez. Overhand right, left. Good work from the youngster. Boy, Sanchez has a lot of heat. He is really stepping on that front foot with that left hook. You can see the evolution of Sal Sanchez working under Joel Diaz. The sparring that they get in that Indio Boys and Girls Club. You also see a who's who coming through. Lucas Matisse was recently in there. Champions. Andres Vivas, what's up? Appreciate you checking in for the first time on Thompson Boxing. Jose Cervantes, I knew Sal and Emilio were going to be great back when they were 12 years old. Alex Godinez buzzed off half a modelo. How dare you? You can't hang out with Steve Kim. <laughs> Wild swing and a miss from Sal. Stiff jab. Good round for Sanchez. And before we head to round number three, let's take a look back. Sal Sanchez doing good work here, getting his left hook on track. And uh, Beto, that looked like a right hand over the top that caused Guerrero to have his glove touch the canvas. And by rule, that is a knockdown. As somebody said, that was a helicopter. <laughs> Jimmy Roser watching us in Cold Lake, Alberta, Canada. What was happening? And people are saying Virgil Ortiz is checking in. Are you Virgil Ortiz? Where are you at? I want to get into it with this Whataburger with you. Now, Virgil Ortiz, I believe, is fighting on the Gan Canelo Golovkin undercard. Yep. And you'll be able to watch Virgil Ortiz and also Alexis Rocha on the free preview. By free preview means... The free view, as the, they call the, it. The yeah. free view. I should get that right since I'm doing that. Uh, the free view means you go on the pay-per-view channel and they'll show you free fights coming up that night. Virgil Ortiz, one of the better young prospects in all of boxing. And then also is Alexis Rocha, hard-hitting South Paul welterweight that we've seen here. So good for them getting an opportunity to fight. Alex Godinez, ain't nobody hating on me and Steve, man. And if they do, that means they get the wrath of the Kim's Twitter. Third round of action, Sal Sanchez in the white. Veteran Ernesto Guerrero from Agua Prieta, Sonora, Mexico. And Henry Ramirez better show up with your drink, Steve. <laughs> the lines are long, honestly, in his defense. But says something though, too, Steve, right? When a fighter makes a decision, a tough one to leave home, like Virgil Ortiz, who's from Grand Prairie, Texas. Well, Michael Dutchover made a similar move. You know, the bottom line is you could be a big fish in a small pond I don't know if you're ever going to truly develop. You need that day-to-day -day competition. And listen, every good to great fighter, they've had the experience of not being the best fighter in the gym at a certain point. That's just a reality. It makes you better. There is that old phrase, 
Iron sharpens iron. And uh, Virgil now with Robert Garcia and the, the sparring he's getting in there. He's actually sparring with Jose Ramirez, who will fight Antonio yeah. Roscoe September 14th. I mean, for a young fighter to have the availability of a Mikey Garcia for rounds, I, I think is incredibly invaluable. Nice body shot from Sanchez. The first fights that we saw Sanchez, he was a headhunter, as most young fighters are. We're going to see him go more to the body as he progresses in his career. Nicholas Herrera watching in Copenhagen, Denmark. Wow. Northwestern Europe. Thanks for the clarification. Good, uh, good basketball there. You watch it, Sal Sanchez. Mouth open now from his opponent, Ernesto Guerrero. Bonito. Bryce Sanchez has not stuck more downstairs. Seemed to really find something there in round number two. If he makes a concerted effort to just keep chopping that wood on the inside, he might be able to score a stoppage late. That hook is nice from Sanchez. Again. And you see what's happening. The hooks downstairs will eventually set up the double hook over the top. Pedro Ruiz watching us in Tampa, Florida. What's happening? Carlos Bui. Shout out to all the Yo 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 Monkey Nation family, of course. Martin and Huda Moreno's podcast. And Season here's some of the action from round number three. Sal Sanchez just being steady and consistent, and we'd like to see more of that. Keep pounding that rock downstairs with that left hook. Nice job by Joe Pahar getting us the replay. Joe's working graphics and everything else. Rigo Alfaro, the Salable, Salinas 831. You see a very tired looking Ernesto Guerrero right now. Only three rounds in. What are your, what's your Twitter sphere telling well, you? Well, Juan Antonio Tena saying coming in late guys, but always something to look forward to. Looks like he has us on the big screen. Juan, yep. gracias. Out in Phoenix, Arizona, probably watching with his dad. Saludos a su papa. And Sal comes off very aggressive here in the fourth round. Blood from the mouth now of Ernesto Guerrero. And Linus SQ says Emilio Sanchez never looked better than his last fight with Joel Diaz boxing. Let's see Sal Sanchez do the same tonight. And yes, that was a knockdown. Make sure you guys watch the boxing rundown every Monday on Facebook. Salvador Carrillo from Legends Boxing in Norwalk. A show that Steve Kim was on and got a nice <laughs> watch. I did. Oh. I guess it hasn't reached my address yet. Well, as uh, Ross Porter used to say, guess a Dodger talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they will have JoJo Diaz on Monday. Way to take the guess that uh, Golden Boy Radio Live has Carrillo. Very nice. You, you see a very tired Ernesto Guerrero. And now Sanchez going to the southpaw stance. You know, I would just like to see him for the next minute 45 punch everything downstairs. See where it takes him. And you see Guerrero covering up his sides, keeping the elbows really low. Redness on the face of Guerrero. So I'm trying to get some space. Sal just shoving him off of him. Moving around. Good job by Sanchez. Moving around and connecting that left. Again does that. Oh, and there it is. Through the ropes. Beto, that was a right hand to the body. That's it, and it's over. That's it. Sal Sanchez with the big KO. What is that old phrase, Beto? Kill the body, the head will die. You were saying it since the second round, and a lot of people on the Facebook stream are saying that Guerrero will not survive this round, and they were definitely on it, as Sal Sanchez will get you the replay for that. A big monster shot of Ernesto Guerrero sent him through the ropes. Yeah, and they're going to attend to him, the California State Athletic Commission and the ringside physician. You could see about 30 seconds 
prior the air being taken out of the balloon from a withering body attack by that young man right there, Sal Sanchez. Guerrero on his stool now. Let's look at the replay, Steve. And this is how it ended here in round number four. Body shot right there and a right hand to the body, which was a finishing touch, and you could see the pain that Guerrero was under. It was the first body shot that really did the work. That one just ended it. Sal Sanchez, the beast, now 10 and 0, six stoppages. As Guerrero stays on his stool. And you know what? I think that's going to start to be his identity in the ring. Looks, do I think he's a great one punch puncher? No, but but the one thing about Sanchez, he's physically strong, and you know Joel Diaz fighters are always physically well conditioned and durable. He may not score a lot of one punch knockouts over the top, but to be able to decimate guys and make this a war of attrition, I think that may be more or less where he settles into in terms of his ring identity. Irene, is that really your brother? Is Sal really your brother, or are you only claiming Sal and not Emilio? A lot of Sanchez kids out there. Your mom and dad are here with the grandkids. Y como siempre, saludos a nuestro gran amigo desde Durango, Don José Vitela. No sé cuándo nos va a cantar, Don José. Y ahora una pelea. With Sal Sanchez. Hey, Sal, we, we do an interview, Sal? <laughs> we, we're going to do an interview? Yeah? You're going to talk? You're going to talk? Maybe. All right. <laughs> As Sal's walking around. Uh, saying thank you to the crowd, chicks and opponent. I don't know, should we interview him? <laughs> should we? Yes. All right, we're going we're gonna to talk yeah, about Yeah, because I'm being told we have about 30 seconds to spare. <laughs> <laughs> Irene, All right, Irene, is this really your brother? Why are there, why are there kids in the ring now? Sonny Franco's inside the ring. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the end comes. One minute, 58 seconds of round number four. Referee Zach Young puts a stop to this contest, declaring your winner by way of a knockout and still undefeated from Pacoima, California, Saul. The Beast Sanjay. And we will be talking with him. And Irene, I know you're related, Irene, because you call me a fool. So, yes, the main event coming up is Ruben Villa, Jose Gonzalez, and Salad Bowl. Time for everybody in the 831 to share the little link. We were in the Stormhouse before to see Sal. Ruben Villa, now we're going to check him out. They're taking pictures. Our main event, Ruben Villa, RV4. Jose Gonzalez, Torito. Coming up next, ThompsonBoxing.com if you want to check out everything you need to know about our upcoming shows and what else is going on. This YouTube, where you guys are watching right now. And September 21st, you'll see Michael Dutchover. And yeah, Moncho, I did say Salabo, 831, man. Oh, Irene, your kids are the wrestlers. I love those kids. Those are good little kids. Yeah, I like them. Say hello to your, your young wrestling kids, man. They're nice ones. I miss them at the gym. Bianca Villa, RV4, let's go. David Trejo, David. Don't just leave a comment. Now, share away. Steve, uh, people were asking about your Manny Pacquiao news for the people that are jumping in. What was it? Give them an update on the, the second time you said it. I believe there's a very good chance, because there is some traction, he could be joining Eddie Hearn and The Zone. And the plan that I'm hearing is that he could be returning in December, maybe in the States as his IRS issues are worked out. And the name that I keep hearing, and I, I understand there's actually been contact between the two camps, is between Manny Pacquiao and Amir Khan. So as they say, stay tuned for details. As Joel Diaz, Joel Diaz doesn't want him to get interviewed. Real quick, Sal, sit down. Yeah, put that on, get the little hair, here we go. 
Sal Sanchez, or Saul Sanchez, let me get the beer out of the way. We put the beer away. Hey, you, you love doing interviews with us, don't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting used to it now? I'm getting used to it. Better. All right. When you knocked him out of the ring right there, did you feel like that fight was going to be over? Um, no, I thought he was going to get up. Did you? <laughs> yeah, because he's a, a, tough, a tough fighter, you know? Now, Take listen, us through this. Here's the replay when you knocked him down, Sal. What do you see? I think he got hurt in the body. The, the right hand to the body. Is that something that you and Joel said we're going to do? We're going to go to the body in this fight? Yeah, just go to the body because that's what we've been working on in the gym. You know, just picking my hands up and picking my punches to the right. body and stuff. Now, you've been a pro since 2016. Where do you think you've improved the most? Um, a lot of stuff, you know. I've been uh, my defense. <laughs> and, you know, I'm still working on not going um, crazy and throwing wild and staying calm huh? yeah, staying calm but. have you been practicing your interviews <laughs> can't <Yeah>. you tell <laughs> <laughs> now all right there's others your interview say hello to all your family i know they're watching i know irene's watching yeah and say just send your shout out um hi <laughs> 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 thank you for watching <laughs> <laughs> all right south Sanchez, the commission's waiting for you joel Diaz. Joel, let's get you in here <laughs> get out of here sal <laughs> I love that kid. Uh, I love him. So send your shout out. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, was that something that you guys planned on? Make well, sure to go after the, the body. You know, I've seen this kid fight before, and uh, we know a little bit on him. As a matter of fact, my son, my son helped him in the corner at the Velasco for yeah. one of his fights. So knowing that, I knew he was a durable kid. Plus, you know, coming in at a heavier weight because uh, Saul was supposed to fight at 118, but his other opponent fell through. So... They got this guy at 121, and Saul, Saul is a 118, you know, and I felt that the weight was the difference. That's why this guy was taking punishment and was was uh, going through Saul's punches. But it was just a matter of time. Like I told Saul, let's break him to the body. You know, forget about the head. Uh, sooner or later, that body shot is going to come. But keep applying pressure to the body, and, you know, he listened really well. well I think we have to go up yeah. top. Let's keep Joel here for Joel a Joel, we'll stick around for a little bit. Right now, our main event coming up, Ruben Villa. Jose Gonzalez, and they sat down with the Thompson Boxing Cameras. My training camp went well. We, we hit it hard for four weeks, and I'm ready to give the, the fans a, a really great fight. My opponent, he's an undefeated southpaw. Uh, we know his record. He's undefeated. Um, you know, we prepared well in training camp. Uh, we, we sparred a bunch of guys who were lefties and we're ready to give an excellent fight. You know, I've been in the ring against you know, top quality boxers, uh, really intelligent, savvy boxers who know how to fight. Um, and you know, it prepared me well to, you know, to fight tonight. You know, I didn't win um, you know, the big time matchups that I've fought in the past, but you know, it doesn't really matter because I, I've learned a lot and it's given me confidence and the ability to, to know that I could, I could fight and, and win tonight. You know, I'm a fighter that, that's pretty flexible. Um, if, if, if we want to give him a fight, we can give him a fight. Uh, we could, you know, cut off the ring. We could, we could back off and give him some distance. I mean, it just depends what the action calls for. Uh, we're comfortable fighting in a, in a variety of ways, and I think you'll see that tonight. Uh, being the main event is uh, always a, a big privilege. Uh, it shows me that uh, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in the gym and my performances overall are just, they're coming out as good as I want them to be. And uh, you know, this is what you get as you're rewarded with another mini event. For this camp, uh, I did it in Salinas, uh, sparring with Joel Diaz Jr., Alan Sanchez, and uh, Bruno Escalante, you know, uh, all these guys are different looks. They all have different styles. And uh, you know, I feel like I'll be ready and prepared for this fight uh, and win fashionably also. That's uh, the game plan. You know, these veterans are, uh, you know, they'll come a long way. Uh, they might not be as flashy with their, their boxing styles, but uh, if they have to get dirty, they'll get dirty. And uh, that's, that's my job is to not, you know, fall in their game plan and uh, stay mentally prepared, mentally and physically also ready. You know, that was a big, uh, a big uh, part of uh, my camp was to, you know, just do what I do best, not fall into these, these guys' uh, veteran moves and, uh, you know, just box. If I have to box and fight, if I have to fight, I'm also ready for that. Uh, my game plan is to always just use my jab, fill them out the, the first couple of rounds, and uh, you know, if I see any openings where I could take them out early, uh, you know, I will, because my sparring partners, they, they really put a lot of pressure on me 
knowing how these veterans are and um, I feel like I'm pretty prepared and uh, always ready for these, these tests. Once again, Darlene and Jasmine. Thank you, ladies. First five pounds, let's get the party underway. Please welcome out of the red corner, making his way to us from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Here is Jose Torrito Soto Gonzalez. Veteran Jose Santos Gonzalez, Torito, the little bull, is what they're calling him. Uh, I don't have to Google this one or Shazam it. El Tapatio, Vicente Fernandez. Record of 23 and 6, 13 KOs. And Beto, he has been at the world class level. Back in March of 2016, he faced Zolani Tete for the vacant IBF Bantamweight belt. He was knocked out in seven. Hey, what's up to the heavyweight? Laron Mitchell checking in right now. And now please welcome his opponent, Making his way to us out of the blue corner from Salinas, California. Here is Ruben RB I guess young boy never broke again is a hot guy right now. I have no idea who it is, but overdose. Sal Sanchez and Rubia using him to come in. Young boy never broke again, Steve. We want to stay hip. <laughs> Undefeated, Ruben Villa the fourth coming into the ring, 12 and 0, five KOs. What up, Joe Surratt? Rachel Villa, Joseph Cervantes. Make sure you guys share and let everybody know. Paul Barajas watching on YouTube. Our main event, in, main event in the featherweight division. Our ring announcer, the always smooth Sonny Franco. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Kilrona, California, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the feature attraction as this is the main event of the evening. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Executive Officer Andy Foster, Chairman John Caravelli, Timekeeper, Lorona Gunaway. Ringside positions, Dr. Jeff Roberts and Matthew Potts. At ringside, your three judges scoring this bout should it go the distance are Dr. Lou Moret, Marty Dinkin, and Rudy Barragon. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Wayne Hedgepath. Eight rounds of action in the featherweight division. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, from Corona, California, where battles are fought and champions are made, ladies and gentlemen, 
Let the battles begin! Enter the scene first. Fighting out of the red corner to my left. He steps to the ring tonight wearing the purple trunks are trimmed with white. When he steps onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 125.9 ready pounds. As a professional, he has an outstanding record with 29 fights, including 23 victories against six defeats, 13 of his wins coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, introducing Jose Torrito Santos Gonzalez. <laughs> and introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner to my right. He steps in the ring tonight and wearing the gray trunks with red. When he steps onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 125.8 already pounds. Tonight, he steps into the ring undefeated. 12 wins with zero losses. Five of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Salinas, California, introducing the hard-hitting Ruben RV4 via the pool. <laughs> Okay, we good here? You got your instructions in your gun? Lay my hands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. Come back at it again. Wayne Hedgeman, the third man in the ring. We're underway in a 126-pound division. Let's look at the tail of tape, Steve King. And you can see Ruben Villa. Will youth be served just 21 years old? This is his third eight-rounder since April 14th. Bethel Durant, Steve Kim, and you all over the world. Appreciate you guys checking in. Our main event coming your way. Thompson Boxing Promotions and Omega Products in Corona, California. Our main event. Hedgeman had a little. Gonzalez, <laughs> hey, I'm going to go. You're in the way. The Southpaw undefeated. Ruben Bia representing Salinas, California. 12 0, 5 KOs. Jose. Santos Gonzalez, Torito, the little bull in purple, 23 and 6, 13 KOs. But as you were saying, Steve, in the open, has gone up against some of the best opposition out there, traveled all over the world. And this will be a bit of a test for Ruben Villa, facing an experienced veteran that has fought for a world title. In talking to his camp, his manager, Danny Zamora, there's a clear emphasis alongside Alex Campanova. They want a more entertaining, explosive fighter. We know he could box. They know he's very crafty with a high boxing IQ. But to be sellable, you need to be a little bit more fan friendly. We know that Villa can box. Can he be the guy that creates a fight? He certainly ended things very abruptly a couple of months ago out there in Sacramento. And you mentioned that was a fifth round stoppage of a guy. You wrote about it on UCN Live about the development of Ruben Villa and exactly what Alex was telling you. Hey, you gotta be excited. We know he's gonna get the goods, but you gotta be able to knock people out. Touted amateur Ruben Villa. Working with Max Garcia, Garcia Boxing. Normally they come down to Southern California and get work all different stables for this camp. They decided to stay home got quality sparring all over the area. For Bruno Escalante, we've seen. Alan Sanchez, Joel Diaz Jr. Talk about that vaunted amateur run of Ruben Villa. One of his rivals was Shakur Stevenson, who won a silver medal for the United States back in 2016. He actually fought last week, scored an eight round decision out there in Atlantic City. Marco Rueda leaves this comment on Facebook. Steve, you can answer it. Shouldn't he be fighting more experienced fighters then? Well, listen, he's 21 years old, but he's facing a guy with 29 fights. I, I actually think this is the type of fighter he should be fighting 
in his 13th professional fight in just a little bit over his second year as a pro. This is the kind of fighter other managers yeah. might not even touch. Yeah, I mean, look, not everyone is Vasil Lomachenko. That, that's like being not put on the fast track, but the Autobahn. And talking to Max Gomez earlier, he believes they're going to they're gonna feel their way out the first two, three rounds and then really step on the gas pedal. If he likes what he sees, Mr. Garcia believes that the next fight can be a 10-rounder. So I, I believe they are stepping up the pace pretty well yeah. here. Go well, look at the box trick of Jose Gonzalez. You're like, oh, okay. You, you fight in Africa. You fight <laughs> all, the different, all over the world. Oh, Ruana says, not Ruben, the other fighter. Shouldn't he be fighting somebody more experienced? Well, <laughs> I mean, he's fought Salido, right? Well, not. Well, look, his last bout was November of 2017, so he's had a bit of a layoff. But 10 long, ten round decision, a loss to Duke Micah. This is a guy now who's a tough veteran, been around the block, and he's going to give you a certain type of seasoning inside that ring. I hey, that's why we interact with you guys. You guys have questions, we're going to answer them. Or Steve Kim's going to answer them. But it, it is a good discussion. And we're seeing the double box. Damn, we got double box now? You guys ain't messing around over here, huh, Paul and Joe? <laughs> Jeez. Dual action double boxes. Second round, un undefeated Southpaw Ruben Villa. And Henry Lawrence on Twitter points out Villa also went two and two against Carlos Balderas, who's a, considered another blue chip prospect under the Ring Star Sports banner of Richard Schaefer. Look for Balderas to fight here September 30th in Ontario uh, as Johnny Molina takes on Victor Ortiz on a Sunday night. Via fought in Salinas earlier this year in Sacramento. Now here in Southern California. Southern California, the headquarters of Thompson Boxing. Via started boxing at five. It was a birthday present. That's what he wanted to do. You bring up Lomachenko, that's one of the fighters that he watches lots of tape on. Via co-promoted by Thompson Boxing and Banner Promotions. Artie Palulo, the great Artie Palulo. Yeah. And Beto, early on, Gonzalez, by being aggressive and initiating the action, this to me is set up for Via to look good there. Via wants this. Via is a natural counterpuncher who needs the opponent to kind of make the fight to begin with. We saw back in April in Salinas a very, very reluctant Marlon Olea, and quite frankly, that was not the most entertaining oh. battle we ever saw. Olea was there to get that check. And you can see Villa now starting to get the rhythm, starting to understand the head movement and some of the movements of Gonzalez, looking a little bit more comfortable than he did, let's say, 60 seconds ago. A31, Salabo, Ruben Villa represents. We actually had Ruben Villa Day a couple months ago. City Council honored him for doing so many good things in the community. Villa actually does a feed the homeless, and he's going to be doing that after this fight, too. I think stylistically, Gonzalez is doing exactly what Villa would want, which is to come right at him and give him opportunities to counterpunch him. Villa is a very skilled boxer, but you know, I don't believe that his strength is creating the action. Gonzalez is bringing the action to him. Good second round. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having us. Our sponsors once again, Mike Zanko, Memphis Scaffolding, Bell Guard, 
Fortifier, El Dorado Stone, Everlast, International Talent, El Pine, Freeway Corporation, Blue Ribbon, Mundy, Tech Packaging, Ishihara, Commercial Bank, Davis Wire, Thompson Building Materials, Thompson Construction Supply, Western Manufacturing, Omega Products International, and a Ruck Tru Rush Truck Centers. Once again, uh, thank you to all of our sponsors for helping to make tonight's event and every event possible. Thank you. Saludos, Pedro Moral, como siempre. Third round of action, Ruben B of the Southpaw. He's in the black. Torito Gonzalez is in Guadalajara. He came into the ring wearing a Charles hat. Mike Brown, my good friend from Auburn, California, who's actually out at Sacramento for Ruben Villa's last fight, saying RV4 controlling angles and di distance nicely so far. Is that the gentleman I met? Yes. Oh, nice guy. What's up, Mike Brown? Monchu, I am drinking. My beer is done. I drank one. Bring me another one. It's a nice summer evening in Corona, California, right off the 15 Omega Products. Thompson Boxing Promotions. In their 18th year of business. Our next fight will be September 21st. You'll see Michael Dutch over. We back at her home at the Double Tree in Ontario. And Beto, I know you saw it on Twitter. Dutch overscored one of the most eye-opening knockouts of oh. 2018. Oh, oh. That was scary, that Did right I hand ever. he landed. Javier Galindo, what's happening? Watching us right now on the Facebook. Undefeated Ruben Villa, 12-0. One Good. thing Villa does very well, and it takes a lot of discipline and repetition. Every time he punches, he moves his head. He's not like a t-ball. He's not laid out there static. I mean, every time he punches, watch where his head goes somewhere. So he never gives the same look twice. And then he does a great job of just pivoting or just moving his feet one way or the other. A clash of heads. Hedgeth warns them. Watch the head. Via represented the USA all overseas. See us. Age 21, as Max Garcia says, you don't have to worry about him. This kid's at home, does his work, gets his rest. You don't have to chase him to come into the gym. It's another thing, the discipline. Especially with young fighters. Oh, those As angles. He moves them back. Beto, those angles yep. are really troubling Gonzalez now. Gonzalez breathing heavy right now in the third. One, two landed by Mia. Solid round for Ruben Villa, the fourth, representing Salinas, California. Brandon Trejo watching us in Napa. What's that, Brandon? And we take a look at some of the action from round number three. Via quick fisted, but also very quick footed. And you see every time he punches, never in the same place exactly, whether it's with his feet or with his upper body. And you see that defense working to offense and offense, again, leading eventually to defense. Joe Surratt watching us in Idaho. Brandon Trejo mentioned young fighter in Napa. We'll be seeing him soon. Kevin Knight with some good commentary on the Facebook. Fourth round of action scheduled for eight. Our main event tonight, we saw Sal Sanchez with the victory fight before this. 
Andres Rodriguez, stop playing with the food, Ruben. The salad bowl, the name he's saying that, that's where all the salad in the world comes from. John Steinbeck. Really nice area. We were there at the Stormhouse earlier this year. And there's a chance we could be going back there in the fall. Really? Yes. That means they'll sell out within two minutes. Dedicated fans to show up. Solid left hand by Villa. Villa now slowly but surely starting to fight more and more yep. off his front foot. Like he's tamed the tiger. And he's ready to really kind of pounce on him. Being a little bit more aggressive offensively. Really settling down is Ruben Villa. You forget how young he is. And the yeah, 12 fights. Yeah, but the professional experience is what he has, lacking compared to Jose Gonzalez, but it doesn't def definitely look like it. Efren Valdez, come on, Ruben. KO him. I didn't go out to stay home and watch this. <laughs> you know, bro, it, it's on Facebook. You could be at a bar watching this, right? <laughs> but if you want it on the TV, I got you. I got you. What's up, Efren Valdez? Appreciate you watching. And it's still early, man. It's not even 11. 126 pounders in our main event. Via 5-6, Gonzalez 5-4. Over the back one, with the two. look, yep. Solid 1-2. Wobbling Gonzalez. Oh. Via starting to tee off. He is really sitting down on that left hand. As he should. He's found a home for it here in the fourth. Uppercut from Bia, one, two, moving around. Breathing heavy again is Gonzalez. 25 seconds to go in the round. Torito, the little bull, doesn't look like one right now against Ruben Bia. Well, the moving him back with his punches. Well, Beto, the bull is now getting gored. You could see Bia now seems to have the rhythm all figured out, and he has a certain look on his face like he wants to score a stoppage. Really throwing some hard left hands right down the pipe. Andres Rodriguez. Yeah, I'm at a bar, bro. Appreciate you. <laughs> Ernie Green has a question. What would be a reasonable, reasonable step up fight after this? Huh. Ha 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 ha. That. We'll, we'll, we'll chew on that one. Joe Cleope, San Francisco Bay Area in your corner. Close the show. And we take a look at some of the action from round number four. Ruben Villa starting to truly dominate this action. And that was the story starting to really hammer home some hard left hands time and time again against Jose Santos Gonzalez. Carlos Deca, saludos desde Chile. Eddie Herrera, Bakersfield. Oh, and by the way, King Dinesh has a very important question that we must address. I think you need to answer the question everyone's been dying to know the answer to, Steve and Beto. Logan or KSI? <laughs> wow, okay. You know what, <laughs> Un unfortunately I know that, and unfortunately you brought that up. Yeah. And how dare you, man, that, uh, that's just, you know what, forget them fools. Well, I don't know who the other guy, I just know who the Logan guy is, just because with the, whatever, I'm giving it too much attention. And, and shame on you for knowing them. Eddie Herrera in Bakersfield, what's up? <laughs> Fifth round of action scheduled for eight. Been all Bruin Villa controlling this one. And let's look at the scorecards on Steve Kim's very unofficial card. Yeah, I think every round's been a little bit more dominant for RV4. The question is, as we move into the second half of the scheduled eight rounder, can he close out this fight in style? That's what his handlers are looking for tonight. Ozzy and Whittier, where the girls are prettier because they tell you that. Hector de la Cruz watching. Mario Valdez checking in. Gonzalez corner telling him to move away. Yeah. 
Seaside checking in. Jason Heave, Seaside's finest. I love how Max trains him. Yeah, they have a good relationship going back to when he was a kid. Hexar's watching us right now out in Phoenix. Oh. What up, Hexar? Does a great job. Very talented graphic designer. Yeah. The Picasso of prize fighting. Oh, wow. Yeah. High praise. I thought it was going to be like the Chaka of graphic <laughs> designers. <laughs> Snapping back the head of Gonzalez. One, two from Villa. Body shot from Villa. Gonzalez doesn't even see a lot of these punches because these angles being given by Villa are really riddling him. Hector De La Cruz in Glendale, Arizona. Is that anywhere near Winslow, Arizona? Yeah, the, the gas is out of uh, Gonzalez. See the wild swing which misses from him. I think as this fight goes on, you'll start to see Gonzalez more and more in the survival mode. The question is at that point, can Villa just kind of push through and push him over the ledge? Stockton, California checking in, home of the ports. And University of Pacific, right? What up, Oliver Candy? Gracias a Carlos Teca desde Chile. A good broadcast from Chile. Glad you're enjoying the stream down there in South America. Bethel, Hector is my real name. You lie, bro. If I, if I had a name of, like Hector, I would not tell people my name is Bethel. Nobody can say it. Stick with Hector. Alex Godin is good experience for RV4. Replays. And once again, it's the angles and the speed of Ruben Villa really dominating. And at this point, Gonzalez seems to be a little bit bewildered by some of the hand speed and the combination sent by Villa. It's been very impressive layering his performance from round one all the way now to the sixth round. You know what, Martin Bernal, I'll bite. You know what, why not? You got Gonzalez by three rounds, please explain. I, I know you're just what? calling. Excuse me? Go ahead, go ahead, explain yourself. Guru, get after it. Six round of action, one side of control by Ruben Villa in my eyes. What are your Asian eyes see? <laughs> oh, I think it's a shutout. <laughs> Again, the question is, we know Villa can outbox this guy. Can he put an exclamation point at the end of this statement tonight? Rene Esquivel watching us in Yuma, Arizona. You know, right? I, you know, we brought up Shakur Stevenson's effort uh, last week, and I was able to watch that fight. I have to be honest, even though he pitched the shutout, I, I thought it was a very boring, desultory eight-round. It, it didn't really, and listen, I'm high on Shakur Stevenson. Yeah, you are. I think but, you more people, right? Yeah, but uh, I got to tell you, I, Last week did not leave me wanting more. All I know is that every time I see Teofimo Lopez or hear him, I oh. want more. Now more. that now that truly is a blue chip prospect. And I'm, I'm not talking about that. Right. Well, Teofimo might be the best pure American prospect right now. Honduras roots. Saw the left hand by Bia. Blood on the body of Rhea, that's when the face of Gonzalez is chopping him down as Ruben Villa. Good clean up right hook. The cut on the right eyebrow of Gonzalez with a strong punch. Villa wearing down his opponent here in the sixth. Defense from Rhea real nice tonight. Well, the one thing I like about Villa with that backhand, it is always planted right near his face and his chin so you know when you have to be responsible when you throw that right-handed jab that left hand has to be in a certain position right near your face and then of course as you punch you can't frame it you just can't leave it out there those hands got to come back relatively quickly then you got to have a little bit of head movement or at least upper body movement which certainly via has 
Is that where you talk about that drill where you keep the tennis ball? Yeah, well, that's to keep your chin down. Okay. Like I said, you don't want to be that Pez dispenser. Moving him back again. Via. Started to put the combination together. Body shot from Via. Strong round for RB4 here in the sixth. As he's wearing down the more experienced Jose Gonzalez. A beautiful evening in Southern California. And here's some of the action from round number six. The beat goes on for Ruben Villa. Hand speed, quickness, and boxing acumen. And again, th that's a great example of what I like about Ruben Villa. Punching and then not being in the same place and then the head movement and then resetting his offense. Certainly the, the boxing IQ and the boxing acumen of Ruben Villa on display tonight. Head to the seventh. Appreciate everybody checking in on Facebook as the doctor's gonna check that cut on the right eyebrow of Jose Gonzalez. Says it's fine, ready to go. Adrian Ella Cruz in Fresno, what's happening? Joe Colope, bl blaming the Jameson, how dare you? Don't ever blame the alcohol. Oh, Martin Bernal, you're trying to be a tr funny troll, but you're not. Oh, I got it. That's cool. That's cool. It's like uh, those parody accounts. I get it. The, all the ones that you, you, you get tweeted. A lot of good movement from Ruben Villa tonight. You see the development of this young fighter. Speaking with Max Garcia, his trainer. So the, the footwork that he does, the balance work that he does, everything that he does, the fundamental work that he does, that's what really separates him from some of the other fighters he's had in the past. Guys with more talent, but weren't necessarily doing the work. You know, I've seen a lot of the Garcia fighters of the past, guys like Eloy Perez and Jose Celaya. Honestly, I, I think Ruben Villa is the most naturally gifted of the Garcia boxing fighters that I've seen in recent years. Now wide open for Jose Gonzalez, who's getting tagged. Body shot from Villa. You know, and I think a few more body shots might yeah. bring an end to this fight. Let's see if he can hammer this home here in round number seven. Chop it down. Garcia holding on now. First time he's held, that means those body shots are starting to take a toll. <laughs> Nothing behind the punches of Gonzalez now. Loading up is Villa. Good movement from Villa. One, two, upstairs. Corner Gonzalez telling him, don't give him space. They see what's happening. The angles that Villa's bringing. Uppercut, that movement right there. Yeah, you could really see the influence of Vasil Lomachenko. Oh, yeah. he watches a lot of tape of him. Just the spins and the pivots. The ability to change distance and then close ground real quickly. And, and then move easy. out of there. No, you got to really practice that. And you got to have a great set of legs. Trying to hold on as Gonzalez, and he will as we head to the final round.
Promotions. Going to be September 21st at the Doubletree Hotel in Ontario, California. Come see a stacked action packed card courtesy of Thompson Boxing Promotions. Once again, September 21st at the Doubletree in Ontario, California. Here we go, fight fans. Put your hands together and cheer the fighters on. This is the eighth in Hunter Round. Eighth and final round, we appreciate everybody watching us tonight, wherever you may be on this beautiful Friday evening in summer. All over the world, thanks for the commentary. You really do make the broadcast, or if not, it'd be just me and Steve talking to each other, which, you know, that's pretty fun. <laughs> but if we do that, we'd have to, like, charge you for that. But you guys definitely make it. It is your broadcast. We'll be back with you September 21st from the Double Tree in Ontario. Go to the Thompson Boxing website to see future dates also. If Pia can finish this, control the fight. It's been Gonzalez. Pia. In my opinion, Beto, is more quick-fisted than heavy-handed, which is okay. There's more than one way to skin a cat. But in these longer fights, he's going he's gonna to be able to really pile up damage on opponents in late rounds, in the championship rounds, which is basically 9, 10, 11, and 12. But as for those striking one-punch knockouts, I, I don't think he's going to score a lot of those as he moves up the ladder. That's really not what he is, which is fine. Only five KOs, but how many guys have that devastating power? No, you know, in the history of boxing, every generation, there's a Bob Foster or a Julian Jackson, but you're right, they, they don't grow on trees. They, they, they are very, very rare. We saw in the fight before, though, Sal Sanchez was working the body, working the body, got the knockout. Ruben Villa has been going upstairs and down, has been controlling this fight from the opening bell. Different angles. Made a frustrating night for Jose Gonzalez tonight. The Torito, the little bull. The horns were taken away from him. There he is on the rope. Ruben Villa's boxing IQ, his ring generalship is yeah. unquestioned, though. Without a doubt, you see that. He creates traps, gets out of bad positions, creates openings. And they have something here with them. Twenty-one year old Ruben Villa. Looks like he's gonna go the distance against Jose Gonzalez. More quality work, eight rounds. All things that you could put in your pocket, go back to the gym, work on things and You'll see him another time this year, maybe twice this year. As the bell hits, we are done. Montel Jordan. This is how we do it, all right. DJ was working tonight. Eight solid rounds for Ruben Villa. Steve's unofficial scorecard. And guys, I, as the late, great Chick Kern would say, you could have called this in Braille. All eight rounds going to Via. Very impressive boxing display from round one to round eight. September 21st, the next time we will be on the air. Michael Dutch over, Ruben Torres beyond. Get your tickets now. New blood. Double Tree in Ontario. Mario Hernandez coming off a nice victory also. ThompsonBoxing.com. I think Montel Jordan was married to Olivia Newton in her third marriage. Well, would you stop that? <laughs> would you stop that? Hey, Montu the second. Good commentary all night long. Appreciate you. Hopefully we see you again on the 21st.
Sonny Franco should have taken that long for this one, right? Sonny, you ready? Sonny, you ready? Right, let's do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after eight exciting rounds of action to the judges' scorecards, we go. Dr. Lou Moret and Marty Tankin both see the balance 79 to 73. Well, Rudy Barragon has it, 80 to 72, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Salinas, California, Ruben, RB4, Rubio the Four. Congratulations to Ruben Villa, the 13th victor in his career. Jose Gonzalez falls the 23 and seven. A good night of boxing here at Omega Products in Ontario. Carlos Velasquez in his pro debut got the victory. Elvis Garcia, unanimous decision. Daniel Guzman, Luis Montellano went the, to a draw. TKO victory for Louis Lopez. He stopped Edgar Garcia late in the fourth round. Sal the Beast Sanchez got a KO as his opponent went through the ropes. And our main event tonight, Ruben Villa decisions. Jose Gonzalez, he swept the cards. A fun night of action here, Steve Kim. Yeah, and I thought both Sal Sanchez and Ruben Villa, they were who we thought they were. Yep. And we don't crown them yet, okay? All, all respect due to Dennis Green. Sal Sanchez, a hard-nosed physical fighter. This is what he is. Ruben Villa, quicksilver, smart boxing technician. And that's what he is. So we end the summer, as always, at Omega Products in Corona. Beautiful evening here in Southern California. Thompson Boxing in their 18th year of business keeps on growing and getting better in our next show in the fall, September 21st, Double Tree in Ontario. Michael Dutchover, you really like him. I do. He seems to be coming along as a puncher, scored one of the most eye-opening highlight reel knockouts in his last outing back in July. A young man that has moved from Midland, Texas to make his dreams come true. And yes, I'll say it, he has found his mojo. He has found I couldn't I couldn't resist. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't, <laughs> can't lose. lose. <laughs> For everybody involved with Thompson Boxing, Alice Capanovo, Pierre Casintas, Jeanette Gonzalez, uh, Joe, pa Joe Pahar, Paul Fornia, and the crew that are doing a great job with the, with the, uh, the cameras. I'm not going to say their names. They're 18, and we can't you know, technically pay them, so we'll figure it out. For everybody involved, I'm Bethel Duran, my partner Steve Kim. Thank you for watching Thompson Boxing. Have a good night.